goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. Welcome to Perspective, a podcast for wedding craves, where we sit down often with a special guest and talk about our many years of experience in the wedding industry so that you can learn from us and grow your wedding business. And who are we? Well, I'm Simon, and this is Optimus Grime. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, today, we are Scottish-based filmmakers, and we are, we are normally just Scottish-based wedding filmmakers who love nothing more than talking shop and drinking coffee with others in the wedding industry. This butchered episode is sponsored by With Jack, but I'll get onto that a little bit later in the show. Greg, who are we talking to today? We are talking to... Andrea and Aaron from By the Millers. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? Hey, guys. Hey. How's it going? Very Good. well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad to be recording. <laughs> Us too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, for our listeners who are like, what the, what the hell is he talking about? We had some technical difficulties with mics, but it's all resolved. And I have whiskey in my coffee and I'm very happy. So yes, on we go. <laughs> Have you guys yeah, we have, have just coffee drink? in our coffee. Just yes. coffee. You know, it's 9 a.m. Yeah. We figured that might be a little early, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how are you? What have you been up to recently? We're good. I mean, if we're talking just today, we basically woke up and sat here, fought with some mics. <laughs> but in <laughs> but in general, like, it's, it's summer, so, like, and we're Texas-based, so the heat is insane. Um, so we've been taking a break from actually filming weddings, so we've been doing a lot oh. of editing weddings and some yeah. other, like, fun side projects. So life looks a little bit different than the usual right now, and I think we're very grateful for that. It's It's been restful. Yeah, it's the longest yeah. break we've had. In a while, um, we almost died last summer, like kind of exaggerating, but also, but also was, not. <laughs> I think we had like three weddings in a row that were 106 and it's like, all right, maybe, maybe we just do more in the fall. So <laughs> yeah, yes, damn, that sounds intense. Yeah, um, so well, the, well, before we continue, um, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Because some people might not have heard of you and your company and what you do. So tell them. Certainly. Um, I'm so I'm Aaron, and this is I'm, I'm Andrea. Yeah, <laughs> and together we're by, by the, Millers. the Millers. We don't always we didn't plan that. Um, <laughs> Clearly, I went for the like cute head till he didn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we got our start at the end of 2019, um, and it like immediately became a full time job for me. Um, I think I started like most wedding videographers, where I didn't initially think I would do weddings full time um, and thought that maybe it would just be a, a means of income while I did other things with my camera. But I fell in love with it immediately. Um, she was a free second shooter for the first few weddings until she fell in love with it. Um, and then since last year, she has also been full time. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I guess. Do you have more to add? Yeah, I would maybe just comment on like our editing and filming style. I think we are much more like in the candid um, space. We love just kind of letting the real moments play out. We um, love good audio. We think that or it's a priority for us for our films to be very like audio driven. Um, we love yeah. a good song, of course, too. That's going to that that plays an important <laughs> an important role but i think our yeah. our films are really anchored around like the good fun maybe emotional audio that we're able to catch um and yeah that really like anchors it and there's maybe something a little bit more unique about our filming style um and then editing style too so anything you'd want to add mm-hmm. in, into that nope you nailed it yay <laughs> with, nailed it. with your time off have you because i know aaron i know you are a musician and you love music. So have you been doing anything along the lines of like writing your own stuff or even do you put, do you ever think about putting your own stuff into wedding films? <laughs> um, yeah, so I have been playing a lot more. Um, and so that's like one thing that I've been thankful for is time to play um, a lot more. I've, I've been like extra involved because we have so much free time, extra involved at our church and playing there. Um, but also one thing that 
this film that I'm currently working on, I was like, so I have the time. I'm just going to spend as much time as possible making like my own. So there's times where a song works out perfectly. Right. And then there's sometimes where you need to add things. So I actually, um, like started working in my own pads and, um, keys through that. And, and okay. really, I think it's hard to find like just very subtle, like space. So I was watching, um, Batman, um, the dark Knight recently. And I just noticed every oh, now yeah. and then there's just like this droning cello. And oh, yeah, I was yeah. like, you don't find that on music bed. Music bed has amazing stuff or are y'all sponsored by any, um, <laughs> music site that I should mention. Uh, <laughs> not, not, none in particular. <laughs> okay, all right, I did want to say the wrong one. Um, but music bit has great stuff, but it's really hard to like, just find something that you want, especially if you're able to do that yourself. And so I've been trying to work that in more. Um, I have more time to do that now, I think. And so, yeah, that's a good question. Cause that's literally like last week was kind of what I've been working on. I've also, um, I actually plan to like go over this because I, I feel like this is underutilized with um, with filmmakers and videographers. But there's mm-hmm. this like site called Splice, and you can get samples. And um, I I was like, why aren't videographers using samples? Like music producers use samples; they're royalty free. I looked on their frequently asked questions, and you can use them for videos. And so um, you can kind of make your own music through cool. samples. Anyway, all that wow. to say, I've really been trying to like create my own unique music beds rather than just like a song that was yeah. already produced. All right, that's really cool. I mean, obviously, I'm assuming you haven't finished any of the tracks, but would you put them up on Music Bed? I don't know what the process to doing something like that would be, becoming an artist and <laughs> putting your tracks up. That might have not, not even crossed your mind, I don't know. <laughs> I I would say it would definitely take like more work on like the production side to like make polished songs rather than just yeah. like filling in space. Um, right. I also have a friend that's like an extremely talented musician that like was trying to put music on music bed. And I, I don't last I saw he wasn't on there. And I don't know if that was because it's definitely not because of his skill set because he's amazing, but I definitely think it's like a process to get stuff on music bed. Um, yeah. It'd be cool. I definitely like would love to, be able to do more music. And so that's why I'm thankful that like, I'm able to work that in right now into at least my own stuff. And then maybe someday I'm scoring other people's stuff. Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's cool. I was just checking uh, splice out uh, for all people who are interested. It's uh, sounds.splice.com. hundred percent royalty free, no commitments, yours forever. Individual samples. Very cool. Might might give that a wee check out actually, because yeah. um, yeah. you're right. There is the tendency to just go to art list, to go to music bed, and just you know f- find find the artist that people tend to gravitate towards for weddings, and just go bloop that one sounds good, and then download it, use it without much thought. Yeah. Um, but I I, I I love the fact that you just referred to um, Batman because I <laughs> love that soundtrack. It is one the commercial music that they use. Um, excellent, but yeah, you're right. Those uh, cello noises and e- even even the Dark Knight use kind of very similar kind of noises. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I love it. I love weird tr- weird tracks. I do tend to go weird for weddings. I don't know if you'd ever mm-hmm. consider that. If, uh, if our couple's weird, then the film's going to be weird. We're going to get weird. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you, you, would you be happy leaning into that? <laughs> oh, yes. for sure. I, yeah. I think, All right, go. Yeah, I think we love yeah. an opportunity to do that. We love an opportunity to lean into romantic, and we love an opportunity to lean into weird. And so, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, we enjoy I would that. say we as individuals maybe lean more weird, so that might even be easier <laughs> for us to like, oh, yeah. resonate okay. with. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, so, so well, what, what's your go-to kind of genre of music then? Oh, man. I, th- I feel like it's all over the board. Mm-hmm. Um, for the most part, I think we really... Or lately, like indie rock. Um, do you know the band Camino? I really, really Camino. like them. No. They're Sounds awesome. familiar, but I can't, can't picture them. Yeah, they're great. Um, they were just putting out new albums. Um, of course, I can't like 
refuse getting into pop culture, you know, and listening to Taylor's new album. Of course, I'm going to listen to that Taylor Swift. She she doesn't need a last name anymore. No. Uh, (laughs) I was going to say, is there any other Taylor? I I I guess not. Um, You know who else I really love lately is Noah Cahan. He's more like indie folk. Um, Okay. I think it's Kahan. Even like okay. indie pop, like uh, yeah. like Hippocampus. Where I think mm-hmm. we're a pretty all across the board music wise, which maybe helps yeah. with like creating unique films because not every couple wants the exact same style and genre. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, everyone talks about um, like coloring and stuff or like the look and stuff, but do many people talk about the feel? Mm -hmm. through music and how that affects it not that many people do yeah um but it's super interesting and i think you know greg and i met uh studying music so Mm. that is definitely a big part of of why we spend so much time you know researching the soundtracks as you guys do yeah that's that's a good point because um, one thing that I see, like if I'm on a forum or, or like a Facebook group with people, they're spending ten thousand plus dollars on cameras, like trying to buy the greatest full frame camera with the best autofocus. And like, what's the cheapest possible royalty free music? And I'm like, <laughs> you, you got to be kidding me. Like, you should be spending more money. Like, I'm not even using full frame. Like, I don't care about full frame. I care about mm. the music and I, I use like vintage, like cheap, the cheap lenses and, and like, there's way more important things. And now I have like four music license cause that's more important to me having variety there. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's hard for like young filmmakers to see outside of like getting the best possible glass drone or yeah. gimbal drone, you know, whatever, like all that yeah. gear is so exciting, but then they neglect the other side. <laughs> Yeah, it's easier yeah. to get drawn in with that shiny equipment. <laughs> it is. And then if you're a part of the kind of like, you, the, if you watch like YouTube, or Peter McKinnon, and all those other great influencers, it's very much like, oh, here's a tech review. And you're mm-hmm. just like salivating at the new tech. And you're like, oh, those shots were amazing. <laughs> and yeah. then you're like, no, stop. Behave yourself. <laughs> I run a business and have a life and I have no money right now. So okay. you yeah. touched on it a second ago about how you, you sort of, found yourself in the wedding industry mm. sort of not intentionally but what's your sort of filmmaker origin because you said you were good you were thinking you might do other things with the camera so what what's your sort of filmmaking origin and then how did you get into the wedding industry origin story the origin story yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> yeah i think coming out of college i like worked a job in the hospital and i was on like a pretty good career path where i was like oh yeah, I'll be able to provide. My wife can stay home with the kids. Uh, like that was just like where my head was. And then I and like realized for three years I hadn't been creative at all. And it like ate me up. Mm. And so I reached out to actually, he's, you know, my best friend and he was my old, like our wedding videographer. We mm. became best friends after that, which was, which mm. was um, funny. But I was like, do you have an extra camera that I can buy? Like I just, I really want to... So at the time I was like building a PC and I've always been like a tech guy. Um, and I was having issues with it and I was like, I figured it out. I was like, I really need to like make a video about this because I think it'll do well and help people because I had issues finding this problem. Um, so I made a YouTube video with it and I was like, okay, I enjoy YouTube, but I also enjoy like in general filmmaking. And so after that, I kind of started going down the path of making a random YouTube video every now and then just to like scratch that itch of making something, um, while still working a job. And then Andrea, she pushed me. Do you want to yeah. take off? Um, so my job was moving us back to Texas. Um, and so that was just kind of a pivot point for Aaron of the company that he mm-hmm. worked with actually had a headquarters here in Texas where we live now in the Dallas area. Um, and so he was like, well, maybe I can stay with them and just go work at headquarters. And I was just kind of like, no, you're not yourself. Like I can tell you're, you're not happy. Like you're happy when you're creating. Um, I can be your sugar mama. Let me take care of you. Um, so he, when we moved to Texas, I, I kept my job and he quit his and, um, 
his mentor that he mentioned earlier, Jake Austin Films. Um, he actually went and like moved in with them in, in the Houston area for a few weeks and shadowed them at weddings. And I think that's where the probably the love affair happened, right? With with wedding filmmaking. <laughs> Not <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta <laughs> specify there. <laughs> Yeah, um, not not a romantic. I love Jake, but not a romantic. Love. Not, not like uh, that. However, uh, yeah, I I think like that's when it started happening. I was like, weddings aren't. I don't know. Like initially, I was like, do you enjoy weddings? Like to me as an outsider, it didn't make a lot of sense. But um, then pretty immediately, it started to make sense, and and I really fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, he's amazing. So like getting to see him create in such a like unique way was really cool. Yeah. J- yeah, Jake Austin. Yes. 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 Cool. Yeah. E- cool website. Cool work. Yeah. Absolutely. I, it's, it's terrible having my laptop because every time you <laughs> reference something, I'm just looking up very quickly. Uh, yeah. Cool. So uh, the question is: Now that you're both in the industry, how how do you feel about it? Yeah. Um, I feel like you probably have more to say on this than me. Yeah, I guess maybe I'm a, I'm a little newer to it. So like Aaron mentioned, I left my, my job last May. So I've been full time for just over a year now. Um, I mean, I've been helping him in the business since the beginning as a second shooter. Um, and then slowly like took over some more like admin stuff and social media stuff. But now I'm, yeah, helping with all the things, editing. And so I'm, I'm more immersed in it now, I think. Um, okay. So the industry, uh, there's so many, I mean, it's so polarizing. There's the good and the bad. And I think like, especially being in Dallas, like, I don't know how much y'all know about weddings in the States, but like Dallas is a very like, look at me city. Um, and so sometimes the weddings here are, are a little outside of what we like to do. Not always. We, we have worked some really, high budget, amazing weddings in Dallas and amazing couples. The families were amazing, but I think sometimes it's all about the optics. Um, and that's not usually like, if that's the case, that's not usually the style that we gravitate towards. We really want couples that are interested in the story. And so it's weird being in this area without like having as much clientele. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I I do think that like there friends that we have here locally are like pushing for like, let's make more art, right? Like let's not just do Mm -hmm. the classic wedding film. Let's not just like show up on the day of film what happens and make a chronological wedding film. Mm -hmm. Like there are creatives around us like popping up that want to do things differently. And that's really Mm -hmm. fun. And like, that's definitely the camp that we're in. Um, I think the challenge now is like, okay, where's our client? Like, where's the client who also wants to do this, that wants to do some shoots outside of the wedding day or like be integrating Mm -hmm. interviews or like fun, creative things on the wedding day. Cause like traditionally it's just so packed with other things and other priorities. And so I think we find ourselves in a weird middle ground right now in the industry of like, there's the classic traditional that we are all comfortable with and that clients are very comfortable with. But now as creatives, we're like, we're ready for the next thing. Mm -hmm. But like, how do you force that on a client? You know, like how do you get them to see that vision as well, want the same things. And we found a few because they themselves are creatives. And so they want to make art out of their wedding day, out of this big moment that celebrates like their love story. And so, um, yeah, I think we're in that, that pain point right now. I think I just, this just sparked, but like, so when we got married, we got married really young. We were 22, 22. Um, so very young, we didn't know anything. And so I think like for us, like there's maybe just like a lack of education and I can only speak from us, but like we would have done things differently because we didn't realize you don't have to do things a certain way. And so I think like there's a lack of people talking about like you don't have to invite like every single person that so-and-so wants and i i would have loved to have maybe a smaller wedding somewhere a little more unique but we like we're limited on certain things because we i have a big italian family she has a big mexican family and it's like we have to invite <laughs> everyone it's gonna be 250 <laughs> yeah. people uh oh, anyway, all that to say for us i think it was a lack of education like not realizing yeah. that the way our parents did it or the way that we see everyone else doing it is 
the way that we have to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. When, when did you guys get married? 2016. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Cause I, I was going to say like COVID I think has educated people quite a bit in mm -hmm. terms of just doing the kind of shit that you want to do. You know, we've kind of all got problems now, some more than others. And I think living with those problems and just accept, accepting them and then accepting that you can have, you, you can just break the mold and actually mm -hmm. just be yourself and do the things you want to do at a wedding. Um, now, I think it's a lot easier for couples to realize that. So, yeah. you know, I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but yeah, the, the whole kind of culture in terms of like couples having like smaller weddings, I think is becoming more the norm. Yeah, I, but, I would completely agree because we've had last year, we had so many amazing weddings where the couples were like, we were inspired to do this because our friends' weddings were so like off because of COVID or whatever. And yeah. Yeah. we got to do like some really cool small elopements and, mm -hmm. and destinations. And um, we have some exciting ones this year. And so I, I yeah. think COVID, I think that's a good point. I think COVID really flipped things a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which on the plus side, when people book us, they really, they really don't, they don't just want a videographer. They want you there because they mean, because you mean something to them. Mm. And I think that's a, that's a benefit, yeah. obviously, yeah. Yeah. Um, which so is cool. On, like on a wedding day, how do you divide up your roles? I assume you always shoot together as a duo or do you sometimes get second shooters in? No, because we're by the Millers. By the Millers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta stick to the brand. <laughs> yep. um, I would love so to. So how, how do you divide up your roles? Yeah. Um, so basically, like, when we get there, I mean, it's really nice that, like, I can kind of hang out with the girls. Am I too loud? No, it's just falling. It's just falling. Her okay. mic's falling. <laughs> um, it like, sounds clear on the Elson. Sorry. It sounds great. Sounds okay. great, guys. Cool. Okay, good, good. Um, so if we're like talking right when we step in, typically um, Aaron's setting up like lights and stuff for the reception, like already getting just things in place while I go check in on the bride, kind of like see where they're at. Um, he'll probably do the same with the groom just so we can get like a lay of the land, make sure timeline's looking good. Um, cause I am very type A. I love a timeline. I love to like know exactly where I'm going next. Um, he mm -hmm. is not quite that way. I I'll ask her what, what's, what's next. She's like, <laughs> look at the timeline. I literally put it on your lock screen. <laughs> like just look at your phone and it's there. Um, oh, that's, that's very handy by the way. Yeah. I love, I love that trick. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Um, doesn't but, work for me though. But. Yeah. I call him my creative <laughs> butterfly. Like he'll just float and bless somebody with his art and then float somewhere else. <laughs> And bless somebody else. Um, so anyway, I direct that. I'm like, okay, now we're here. Now we're here. Um, when it comes to like actually shooting, like when we're in, in the groove of things and like rolling with the timeline, um, I'm typically more like on like an 85 millimeter, like focal length. So I'm getting like really tight, like, uh, up close details, kind of like the more in between moments, of course, like the, the main action I'm going to get as well, but maybe more from like a creative um, like aspect while Aaron is more, what do you do? Usually like a 35? Um, yeah, I kind of have like a zoom from like wide to mid range. So I can kind of cover, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it's juggling a gimbal and then handheld and then uh, a monopod and then running with a tripod and a gimbal and my audio. And <laughs> like um, I said earlier, we're extra. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't know a filmer, a filmmaker out there who hasn't gone through at least the, I own everything. I'm going to use everything at a wedding. So don't worry about it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I think that's part of my, my, again, being like a guy that gets his inspiration from movies more than weddings. I try not to look at weddings as inspiration just because yeah. weddings follow trends and, and that's, and there's nothing wrong with trends. However, like I think that they change so quickly where I've, I personally just, I love looking at cinema and I think that every shot, like if it's intentional with like the movement or whether it's static, like in movies, like this is 
you can only plan so much on a wedding day, but it's nice to be able to be like, okay, this, I really want it to be a smooth shot. This, I really want like a handheld look or whatever. And so yeah. it's fun to like utilize your style of shooting and your, what you're using to stabilize your shot to tell the story as well. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of trends, like, is there anything like you have seen when you've been checking out some wedding films that has sort of struck you recently or like, I know your style doesn't really jump on trends, but is there anything that's caught your eye recently in the wedding industry? I think you could say that our style, some people would think it is like super trendy because we've been shooting super eight for like a minute and <laughs> there's a lot of people that are like talking trash on super eight right now. <laughs> and I've, I've been like a film junkie for a while and I love film and I can't yeah. shoot right now. At least I can't shoot 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter. And so, um, I enjoy shooting super eight. And I think that that's like, it's trendy right now. We can't deny that like everyone's shooting super eight right now. Um, Photographers are doing it. That's how trendy it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're adding it on. Yeah. Um, I think that like, as far as like other trends, I don't know that I've like seen too much. I think that we've been on the like hype intro and then moved to like slow and romantic for a while. You know, I, I remember when like intros first, like became a big thing. But I don't know. Have you seen? She honestly, she watches way more than me because I don't really get on our Instagram much. It's usually her. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I would say trends probably don't impact our full films that much. I think mm -hmm. just the I love to just like kick back and rewatch every clip from a wedding day and kind of let that decide what what's going to happen. Like, yeah. um, I the film I'm working on now, we got a lot of really cool post like evening shots like after the send-off happened we went out and we did an extra shot uh some we weren't taking shots we did extra like <laughs> portrait sessions um with a couple and then like they were just saying goodbye to their friends and family like hugging and like a lot of that really impacted me and so i was like you know what it could be fun to start the film with all this fun extra footage that we don't typically get yes. um and so yeah for our full films we just kind of let what we captured on the day kind of tell us what where to go um but when we're talking about trends i would say maybe like our what we post on instagram um you know as like our portfolio the reels that we're putting out that kind of stuff can maybe be more trends driven um mm -hmm. just because that's what's going to capture people's attention and then yep. i trust that when they land on our website and they see our work like they'll they'll understand who we are so i would say trends impact probably more what we put out on instagram than our full films Okay. Yeah. What would be a trend that you would tend to put into your Instagram like right now this year? That's a great question. I think like what's trendy right now on Instagram, at least from what I've seen and what we have been trying to put out is like unique moments that you don't normally see on a wedding day. So like a really funny, candid moment um, or like, can you think of a reel that we've done like a uh, super... Funny candid. Funny candid. So we haven't posted it yet, but I wanted to post it this week. What is it? The pinkies. Oh yeah. Like, um, this one couple, they were just like hilarious and we had them mic'd the entire, both of them mic'd the entire day. And mm -hmm. so they had like one moment where she was going to do portraits. They, was it after the first look or was it after? This? No, it was, a, it was after the ceremony. Uh, we had just done like big bridal party, um, portraits, you know, and they, um, just did a quick shot together or were drinking their cocktails. You know, like sometimes the planner will come bring them a cocktail after the ceremony. So they were yep. drinking that together. Um, and they forgot to put their pinkies out on their first try. <laughs> so they like drank again, like pinkies out. Like, they ran back and, and then yeah. did their pinkies out. And, and so it's like fun moments like that, that like are real life. And, and yeah. you wouldn't probably put that whole moment in a wedding film, but it's fun to like add those to a reel and kind of put that out there because then people gravitate towards that and they're like oh they're real people and and like yeah. fun moments like that we still get to relive yeah outside yeah. of our wedding film i would say yeah. a, that is unique to our filming style like that we're able to catch those in between moments that we have the audio of it because um we do mic the groom and the bride and i know y'all have talked about that in the past so we can <laughs> <laughs> bookmark that if you want um but because of our filming style like that's something that's unique to to our style what's our I, motto 
always be filming. <laughs> Never not be oh, filming. Okay. Pop yeah. some more cards yeah. in if you got to. Um, yeah. But it, I think a pressure I'm feeling now is like, I look at like the high end videographers and like they are posting just these stunning visuals with like really mm. like romantic music. And I'm like, I want to post that stuff. We have that stuff. Um, like we should be filling out our feed with like these really polished, beautiful, slow mo like moments. And then I have to remind myself like that's, that's not necessarily us. Like while we can get that, like that's, I don't think who we've, who we've become. And so I think that's some pressure that I feel um, from yeah. social media is to, to lean into styles that aren't necessarily ours and like what makes us us. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. It's an interesting motto. Cause I always find myself like, I'll come back and meet Simon after preps and we'll be like, Oh, I think I've overshot those preps. Like I've got far too much already, but it seems like you, you just roll with that. You're like, yeah, just get more than you ever are going to need. I think like that is something that I learned in it, when crafting our style. Like there was always this pressure of like a lot of educators, which this works for some people, but a lot of edu- educators saying like, you should be able to shoot to the edit that you're going to do. Um, mm. But I think for us and, and for our style, we want to create a unique film for every couple. And, and I know that's what everyone says, but like to the degree where I want to film every moment. So then when I get to that computer, I relive everything that I possibly can. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say like, if they're having like a moment that is absolutely not worth filming, then I'm not going to film that. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm always just kind of locked and loaded ready. I'll, I'll be like in there just enjoying the moment, talking to them. But then if, mm. If there is a moment that I'm like, this is perfect, then I, I throw the camera up and, you know, sometimes like, you know, shoot at the hip just so they yeah. don't yeah. get, you know, stage fright. Um, and, and that is part of it. It's way more intense on the back end. If you're trying to just crank out wedding films and do like 30, 40 a year, then I would not suggest doing this. Um, <laughs> but if you are trying to like have as much to work with in posts and, really put in the work to make a unique film, then it's certainly worth it. Like in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely say it's, it's, you know, if, if you're a creative who likes to sell the raw footage, that would be a great, a great selling point. Like if you're mm-hmm. an overshooter, if you're an overshooter and you know, you are like <laughs> tell your couples, they might want to <laughs> buy that footage from you. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's funny because, you know, as filmmakers, so, for us, the, the the way the way I see it anyway is we're we're not just making a wedding film. I mean, we are doing that obviously, but I feel very much that the speeches are their own thing. Their the ceremony is its own thing, and the wedding film is another edit altogether. And I feel like those are kind of like mixed uh, media almost. And what I mean by that is like one is very much, um, you know, just documenting and the other one is, you know, making something look cinematic and capturing those emotions and, and, and stuff. And my brain is like, I have to capture both sets of content really well. So, you know, obviously we do document full ceremony, full speeches, but in my head, I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm rolling for all, the, like you guys said, the those moments that I know probably aren't going to make it into the film, but I want to have in case they ever want it or th- so that I can accurately re- relive the day, just like Aaron said, and just have a better feel of the wedding, you know, when I come to edit it a couple of months down the line. But yeah, how, how, how do you guys balance your, your work and your life, especially as a married couple, it, it always interests me. And especially when you said you almost got to burnout last year nearly. So yeah. is there anything you've learned from last year? Uh, so we don't balance it very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will say I've, I've learned this beautiful thing about Aaron where like once he's mastered something, like he's on to the next. Um, like thing that he wants to conquer and create. And so I do feel like it's been a process of like, okay, we figured out what work-life balance looks like with our, um, 
our, our wedding films and our wedding business. And then boom, he creates a new business and then we kind of get our feet under ourselves and then boom, he <laughs> creates another business. Um, so for us, I feel like it's just constantly catching up and like uh -huh. figuring out what normal looks like. And, um, I think big picture, like when we have family things or we want to take some time for ourselves or vacation, like It, that's a priority and we make sure mm -hmm. that it happens and like then that means our work days look a little bit different like we were working until like 10 p.m you know that's that's actually pretty normal like we will go live our life during the day and get important things done during the day and then that means okay well we're gonna work a little bit later tonight or like fit yeah. in an hour or two on saturday sunday when typically that should be like a weekend um so it's it's pretty sporadic so that we can fit everything in but we're balancing it better i think like a good example is we have two different birthday parties this weekend um one for her family one for our friends and we decided we're going to work around those because we also had events during the week with like family and friends and so it's just kind of filling in the space of like not neglecting family and friends but also not neglecting work it feels like a grind but also i kind of am obsessed with like Yeah, maybe I don't know with the grind with the grind so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm intrigued with these other businesses that you're that you keep starting what what are these they're all they're all filmmaking related um, okay and, okay yeah and so um we launched officially launched our commercial business. it's really falling isn't it yeah <laughs> we um <laughs> if you adjust that while I talk. I just didn't want We uh, launched our commercial business uh, this summer, which was really great. And another reason for like kind of taking the summer off from weddings. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I always did on the side under just like our initial LLC, but we like rebranded it and we really want to grow that. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's, that's been a lot of work, um, but it's been rewarding. And mm -hmm. then Uh, are you considering YouTube? Too? I'm considering YouTube. I, I got, I don't know what happened, but I just like randomly started getting more interaction on YouTube. So I started putting more time into that and okay. started getting like some affiliate deals and it, it kind of became like a little part-time job thing that kind yeah. of has helped in the middle of summer with no weddings. And so that's been YouTube's a lot of work. Um, and so that's been like fun though. And that's where I got started and then kind of dropped it. And it's been fun to like revisit and, and do more uh, YouTube stuff. And um, yeah, so I, I think those are like the main things now. Mm -hmm. Again, all filmmaking related, but like just yeah. they all, it's weird because you have to completely disconnect from something like <laughs> weddings. And then you have to dive into like, you know, working on a thumbnail and then you have a commercial client that's like, where's this at? You're like, Oh yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah it, it's been, it's been a grind, but I, I yeah. love it. And, and then she's, I think loves it. Yeah, I do. I like, I'm, I'm not the creator that Aaron is like that just does. That's not just me in my natural state. Hey buddy. Um, who's, who's this? Who's this? This is Obi. We can't move our camera, but Obi, come here. <laughs> let's see if he can, move kind of around um but yeah Aaron kind of like gets something off the ground and then like tells me how I can help and it's been really great to just like jump in and help him where I can and like free him yeah. up to go on to the next the next thing because I know he's got a backlog of stuff he wants to get to next so <laughs> it works out fine for me yeah, yeah. so Good. focusing on the wedding films then what what do you offer your couples and like where do you sort of position in your pricing for your couples yeah um i think like we really we actually have been reevaluating this pretty heavily we have um a branding like agency the the people that did our commercial stuff we were like y'all did such a good job let's revisit our wedding stuff and so now we're in the process of that and i think we're going to overhaul pretty much all of our wedding packages and reevaluate that but currently we run like you know the three package system um kind of like this middle one is perfect for most couples this top one is like really what we try to sell couples on obviously but it has the multi-day um you know an extra adventure session like Uh, we've had some couples do hikes or, you know, they got magic tattoos. That was a really fun one. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. And then 
that's kind of been the package system um, for us, really trying to aim like, okay, let's get this couple that go for this top one. Okay, well, maybe they'll go for this middle one then if, if they don't go for that one. So that's been that's been the the target. Yeah, and I think it's yeah. we're in an interesting season, like booking out twenty twenty four because our our prices are can be a little on the higher end, and so you do get that baller couple who's like going for that top package, and like you know when you <laughs> get them, you feel great and you're so excited because yeah. like that's the kind of work we want to be doing. Um, but then you also just like get a lot of no's and you get a lot of ghosting and a lot of like, that's not in the budget and we have to go another direction. And like, that's really hard, um, because we definitely at our price point, we get more no's than yeses. Um, but yep. th- we price ourselves that way for a reason, but it, I mean, it still is hard, you know, like, and yeah. it just tends to be like, we get a lot of no's for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then we'll get like two or three yeses and that's exactly what we needed. And then it's another like dry spell of like no's. And so our, yeah. our price point's difficult because the, the people who want it are going to pay for it. But they are like, you know, there's less of them out there. And mm-hmm. it's just, you know, a lot of ups and downs and just trying to reassure ourselves that we, we priced ourselves where we need to be. And mm-hmm. and yeah, not not doubt ourselves in that. Yeah. For a couple to book you, how much do they t- typically spend? I think average is about 6K. Um, yeah. And that's like the middle package. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously we try to build on that if they're interested in the extras because we love to go and be extra. But I think that's <laughs> about average for us. Yeah. Do you sell any extras that are like out of the box? Like not your stereotypical speeches film or ceremony or do you have anything kind of wild uh, adventure sessions I'd, I'd say i think they're still not the norm like adventure sessions yeah. for couples to like want to go do something like we have one couple that i don't actually know if they officially booked us but they really want to do like so they met at an ihop or something like that and they really want to go to an ihop really early when there's like no one there and yeah. like just us to film some like extra moments there um, kind of almost like a reality style where like they'll be mic'd up and you might hear some conversations that we are able to sprinkle sprinkle in if it works. So mm-hmm. I think like that stuff outside the wedding day still doesn't really work its way into the wedding experience and wedding films. Um, but that's something that we're really trying to push is like mm-hmm. we want to tell your love story, not just your wedding day. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> A little plug for our YouTube channel because we're kind of new to YouTube as well, which is uh, a fun fact for our listeners. Uh, if you like this conversation, you can join us on our YouTube channel at Perspective by Cinemate. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified when new videos come out. Uh, there will be one of these videos every second week. I don't know what day. I think it's a Monday. And we are also now doing educational content. So it'll just be Greg and I sitting at this table talking to you about how to level up your business. Um, So, yeah, very excited about the new sets of videos coming out. Yeah. Um, So you touched on it at the start about your style of wedding film. But can you sort of go into that a bit more and tell sort of listeners what your style is? Yeah. So, um, shameless plug for something that we've made. (laughs) So our, our style really adapts to our couple. Um, we're very relational. We like to get to know them. I interact with them on like Instagram all the time because you get to learn a lot about somebody based on what they like post on their stories and things I wouldn't normally know unless I'm like stalking them. Um, but yeah, so we're very (laughs) relational, um, kind of chameleons in that, like, if it's like a very romantic, sappy wedding, like your film's going to feel that way. And if it's like super hype, no down moments, like then your film's going to feel that way. Um, so we actually made this like Buzzfeed style quiz, um, where people can go through and be like, what's your favorite part of the day? It's the personal vows. What are you like? what custom like element would you integrate into um your wedding day like tequila shots like so that they can like take this fun little quiz and at the end i kind of like made it to where like it'll give you a personality type and like a list of our films that are like okay you're a very hype couple like your your wedding's gonna be a party here are films 
that we have done that are very party vibe. Um, and then, you know, to the contrast, which is like, okay, you're very romantic. You're very sentimental. Here is a, a chunk of films that like lean into that style. Um, so we've created that because our portfolio is so diverse and we have like films that are all across the board. Yeah, I think it can be hard. Like if a couple lands on our website, they're like, I don't see myself here. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Be- so we've kind of like tried to give them tools to like funnel them to the, the films on our portfolio that can like feel like themselves um, because our style is to adapt to who we're working with. Um, mm. And then I will stop talking and let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I, can I just ask you something? Because that was one thing that I loved about your website was that little quiz. Um, and when I was going through and doing the research, I was like, Oh, I wonder I'm going to click this <laughs> link and see, see what happens. So, it does ask you a whole bunch of questions. Um, I, I wrote some of them down here, right? Uh, what do you do in your free time? What is your dream venue? Um, I think. I, I think those are the questions yeah. that you asked. Yeah. Yeah. You, and, and there are more. Um, it's built into your website. Um, is what What is the back end of your website, if you don't mind me asking? So like, like the Squarespace. So Squarespace. Um, it, it is a Squarespace. Cool. Yes. But so just that's a third party thing. Mm-hmm. I think. The okay. Quizzes. Cool. And when a couple go through the quiz, what happens then? I know you said that kind of tailors the videos that they see. Do they go to like a splash page, depending on what answers they've written, or? It just redirects them within the quiz to like a page where I've embedded um, recommended films. And that's cool. really it. I, I think it gives there's... a description too. Like, so what are the categories? The romantic, the the bespoke, the... Mm. The reveler. The reveler, which would be, yeah. you know, the partier. And so let's say they got the reveler. It gives, she gives like a description. Like you, you know, you value partying with your friends, blah, blah, blah. Here's some films to watch. And, and some yeah. add-ons to consider. Like, you're going to yeah. want that raw footage so you can yes. see yourself being ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, a little tactic and upselling there as well of like, okay, yeah. because you value this, this is a great add-on for you. Mm. Did I cut you yeah. off? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. on. I saw an opportunity to say the word ratchet, so <laughs> I took it. That's just great because obviously, yeah, you do sell, but it's like, it's not like, it's not like you're selling on the back end. You're kind of putting the idea at the forefront that they might mm. like these add-ons. And I quite like that because I wonder how many filmmakers especially, you know, do that in that order. I don't know. Yeah. I'd be interested to hear if you do that in the comments. But as I was, um, as I was going through the quiz, like, cause I felt it and oh, see what I was well. <laughs> But I was like, this is surely going to ask me for my email at some point so that <laughs> they have a lead. But yeah. interestingly, you yeah. don't take that approach. Is that just so that it's much more sort of personal and up to them to want to get in touch then? I think I'm just not the marketing genius that you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, think, I think, no, that is brilliant. Honestly, like obviously like capturing their information so then we can start, you know, marketing. But also I think we both struggle with this tension of like being too salesy and too pushy, which I mean, as a business owner, you have to be like, it's yeah. just a reality. Um, so that's, that's some good that is uh, great. food for thought there. Cause I literally didn't even think through that. Yeah. <laughs> that's why but I yeah. call you Optimus Grimes today. <laughs> well, that is a tough balance <laughs> as a creative who runs a business. Cause a lot of creatives in this industry are like, oh, I don't like selling, but Mm. you have to, to be able to create your work. So yeah, 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 it's a tough balance. Yeah. Yeah, But it's funny being, uh, you guys being American because like your culture is known for being like hyper salesy when it comes to like business. So there you go. UK listeners. You're just generalizing the whole of the US. I know. (laughs) Terrible, terrible. But there you go. UK listeners. We're all in the same boat. Um, Guys, I want to go back to kind of your films. Where are you picking up influences? Because obviously you mentioned cinema. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you're kind of like inspired by? I think um, like movies would be probably number one. Like I'll see something in a movie and I'm like, I'm like, 
I'll learn a technique. I'll, I'll learn how they transition from scene to scene because sometimes there's this crazy moment and then this really soft moment. And mm. it's really hard to like thread that needle of like, how do I get there without it being jarring? Um, so I, I really use that for inspiration there. Um, even like reality TV, like we'll, we'll watch like Love is Blind and we might have a couple that fits perfect for an edit similar to that. I definitely like, I try not to lean too much into reality TV. It's a little (laughs) corny, but like there are things that I could take away from that. And then I still pull inspiration from wedding films. Like there, there's, there's definitely like a handful of people that I just like, I really, I love their work. And so, um, you know, whether I'm friends with them or whether I'm just, I see them post something and it Mm. blows up on Instagram. It's like, wow, like that was amazing and so it's it's fun to pull inspiration from all of those facets i think i used to at least in the very beginning this is for me personally i only looked to wedding videographers and and my thought was can i do this because i've never seen another wedding videographer do this is this okay is this acceptable for a wedding (laughs) film and then i realized yeah, I could do that. Like, uh, because someone hasn't done it, that might be good. That might be something special. Yeah. And, and I'm no trendsetter on that front, I don't think. But like, at the very least, like, it will, it won't be, you know, wrong for me to, to do something. So, uh, yeah. 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 Yes. I would- and uh, yeah, I, lo- I love that as well because you're absolutely right. Like, be unique yeah. and use that to kind of help push your business forward. It's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Andra, yeah. uh, I oh, no, interrupted you. No, you're good. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I would also say like our, yeah, it needs an, a We need to adjust that mic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've done it a couple times that it just keeps falling on Very me. Tight. No, yeah. I hadn't tightened it. Um, I would say even like, as I'm thinking about it, I would, I get inspired by like our commercial work because our commercial work, we get to sculpt light. We get to like, just like choose a specific setting for a specific reason we script it like there's a script so we know like exactly like how a moment's gonna build out like the kind of b-roll that we need and of course there's limitations to that on a wedding day but as we're like trying to branch into like additional shoots outside of the wedding day like that's a really fun way to get intentional about it like choose really cool spaces um work with the couple to like scripts like Aaron mentioned earlier like our Shoots outside of the wedding day have been kind of hard to integrate into the film. But if we find that couple who wants to make something like bigger than than their wedding day, like, why can't we script a little bit of it? Right. Just because it's scripted doesn't mean it's not them. Doesn't mean it's not like reflective of like their relationship and how they got to where they are. So I think it'd be fun to like kind of lean into the things that we do commercially um, Mm -hmm. in our wedding films. Um, That could be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Do you, you mentioned a couple of uh, wedding filmmakers that uh, you really enjoy. Can you can you give us a few names? Because I always love being introduced to to new talent that I've never heard of. Yeah, especially uh, by people across the river, <laughs> <laughs> the ocean, Point. the the bi- the big river, the big the, one, <laughs> the big one. Yeah, <laughs> I I don't feel like many of these will be ones you haven't heard of, but like Jay and Mac are ones that like we adore. Um, they are just, they do a really good job at like blending real kind of moments with couples that like are going the extra mile and being very extra, but like half personality. Um, so that they're like definitely one, um, one we really admire is Martin Weddings. He's in Houston. Um, he, he does some awesome work. We actually work like in similar circles. Like we could definitely look at each other as competition because like, our main planner that we work with, we both work with that planner, but right. like we adore him. He's, he's amazing. Um, uh-huh. he does amazing work. And so I, I would definitely mm-hmm. say like, he's a friend that does awesome work. Um, um yeah, I cool. love, uh, blink and films by Madeline. I think those, uh, those are yep. very like emotion driven, driven films. Like they make me feel like if I need to have a good cry, I'm going to go and I'm going to watch one of theirs. Yeah. Like, uh, they're just beautiful, like stunning imagery. The story that they're able to find and pull out is incredible. Um, so those, those two are high on my list too. Yeah. Also real quick interruption for just the audio listeners. We have a dog that drags <laughs> his feet. I'm so sorry. That's the scratching noise. We don't have anyone like, yeah, I don't know. No yeah, one's scratching the, at the door. The, yeah, it's the dog. 
Yeah, there's no one trapped in the basement. On your on your website, it desc- you describe yourselves as a um, hype hi- hype person. You're going to mm. be the hype man, hype woman of the <clears throat> day. Um, you're going to be crying with them. You're going to be celebrating them. How does that translate to you on a wedding day? Like, what are you actually like? Yeah. So I think all of that happens beforehand. It's the relationship that we build beforehand. Like if we can, we're going to be taking um, our couples out to dinner, drinks, game nights. Like we're going to build that relationship beforehand. Um, Like I mentioned, I'm in their DMs a lot. Um, Just commenting on things that they have going on in their life. And, um, so that brings a level of comfortability on the wedding day where like I mentioned earlier, you know, like first thing I do is I go and I check in on the bride and see how she is. And like, we're sometimes that takes a little bit long because we're just like catching up and they're telling me all the drama that happened. And, um, we're just like able to experience whatever the couple is because we have that relationship beforehand. Um, like they're not seeing us for the first time on their wedding day. Um, which is pretty disarming, right? Because like we roll up and we look a little different than in real life because we have like cameras strapped to us. Aaron mentioned like with the gimbals and the tripods and the monopods and we're shorter in real life. And we're very sh- <laughs> we're small people. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're able to like tap into the emotions of the day because our couples already know us and um sometimes their parents already know us. We went over to dinner at one of our couples um parents' house the other week and like their parents made us dinner and so like we had like really um emotional moments with like parents too, like people outside of just the couple like Oh, let's tell the um, crazy Hawaii story. Oh yeah, oh. do you want to say sure. Yeah, so I had a camera. We were in Hawaii, so far from Texas, and yeah. this guy sees me with the camera and we just start talking. And he's from Hawaii. And I was like, Hey, let's connect on Instagram. Well, I see we have a mutual friend and it's one of our brides. And then he was like, what? her mom owns this botanical garden across the street. And so we like hopped over. We t- like went and met her mom. She like gave us handmade lays that she made <laughs> that morning. Oh, um, and so like, yeah, that's just part of like connecting with um, the girl's name was Chastity. That was like part of connecting with her beforehand, um, building that relationship. So where like then she's like, "Mom, you have to you know meet these people," and she like went the extra mile and gave us like this special tour of it the botanical amazing. garden. Yeah. So I and think- then on the wedding day we were like so tight with her mom. <laughs> we spent more time yeah. with her mom than with the bride and groom at that point. Um, so yeah, it's just all about relationship building that, so that we can be like in, in the emotions, whatever that happens to be on the wedding day, like we're, we're in it and like we're invited mm-hmm. into it and it's comfortable that we're in those spaces because like, yep. we have pre existing relationships. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's so funny because like, have you ever heard of the, the, the kind of conversation around being professional at wedding? Mm-hmm. Do you ever do you ever think about that? Like I I kind of feel kind of sorry for the people who feel held back by mm. the persona of needing to be you know professional, which isn't it's not really I, I don't I don't know what there's no real definition of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that sounds absolutely like the total reverse. You're so kind of <laughs> not that you're unprofessional, but like sure. there is like. You, like the professional thing seems like a, you're spacing yourself from people. Whereas mm. the way that you're approaching it is like totally together. And I love that. Yeah. I love that. I think there's even this tension. This goes back to about what we were talking about earlier. Like we, part of us feels this tension being in Dallas. Like we need to be more professional and stiff mm. on the wedding day. Yeah. Uh, but then it's like, is that true to who we are? You know, I, I think we have the ability to like kind of be chameleons and, and if we need to be that space, that's fine. But also we kind yeah. of already repel those couples immediately anyway, when they realize <laughs> yeah. like on the consultation call, like, Oh, they're extra. Like they're wanting to get dinner with us. What? Um, yeah. so yeah, it, it's, there is that expectation for some people, like they want to, you know, look extra professional and, and we try to, we try to fit the vibe. Um, yeah. but yeah, there's a tension there. I yeah, think for sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you guys ever faced any like challenging moments throughout your career? Like say the early days, like at a wedding. It's a good 
question. I think in the early days, we didn't always know how to navigate the relationship with the photographer. Like we didn't mm -hmm. know our, our place, I think. And I don't think we were confident enough in who we were and like the importance of what we were doing. Um, where sometimes that relationship could be like a little tense. Like now our favorite people to hang out with on the wedding day are the photographers. Um, yes. like we have great relationships. So typically we get to work with our besties and like, that's yeah. always so much fun. And like we can feed off of one another. Anyway, it's very symbiotic. Is that the, the term where you so. both benefit? Um, Sounds but good. yeah, early on that yeah. was, <laughs> <laughs> early on that was hard that was because we kind of felt less than i would say and like correct me if i'm mm. wrong but like especially like when our prices were like a little bit lower and i'm like they basically paid for my gas to get here and that's it um you know you can just feel a little bit less than and so you don't know how you work in and you don't know yeah, yeah there's there can be a tension there and i feel like sometimes you can feel that and then they like treat you differently and so like i would say mm. early on like the relationship there with the photographers could was difficult. Um, mm -hmm. but I think as we got more confidence in who we were and like, mm -hmm. um, also just confidence on how things run on a wedding day and how to do things respectfully. And, um, yeah, all of that has gotten like a lot better, but it was tense at the beginning, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. did you say? What, did, yeah. I mean, did you have any, like, <clears throat> f like how, how did that, um, how, how did that show up on a day? That kind of tension between you and the photographer? Or, or there was, not, not, not tension, but like, how, how did you kind of navigate your uncertainty in, yeah. I think like there was one moment when I realized like, if we were at that price range for much longer, like this would continue to happen. Um, we had like one okay. photographer that didn't take the time to learn our names. She just kept calling us. She called video me video guy. guy during the portrait <laughs> session, which like she should have known my name by then. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like a first look. It was like at the end of the day. Um, yeah. and, and then like at dinner, she even said like, she was like, what are y'all's prices? She was like, I'm having such a hard time. Like couples want a videographer, but like, I can't recommend anyone. I haven't found anyone good. That's under like a thousand dollars. And I'm like, well, Cause that's really cheap. Um, Damn. And so at that point I realized like, I don't really want to be like associated like with a photographer that treats video as lesser than like we yeah. are like, we should know each other's roles and, and we should like be able to help each other on the day of. And yeah. so I think that was pretty eye opening for me. Like we kept running into that when we were the cheap like video, which this was like the first year when we didn't have the portfolio to, to sell yeah. expensive films. Um, yeah. and before we even knew who we were, like, I think that was another challenge. Like if we're talking about challenges, like a challenge for me was like learning who we were and, and, and really crafting our own mm. unique style, um, for wedding films and, and, and for that space. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think we definitely struggled as well with that, especially in the early days. Um, we started, I mean, we've been doing this for 13 years. When we started, and we were we were looking at like Joe, uh, do you remember Joe Simon? When he did, uh, he was like an Austin wedding filmmaker. Um, in fact, he was the kind of only, the only one that I would ever look at film wise. Yeah. But it was like that kind of very cinematic and I used to storyboard stuff and I didn't really know how to, get the footage that I needed to get without feeling like I was bothering the photographer at the time. Mm -hmm. And because our style was so new and like you guys, like no one was doing it. I don't think the photographer kind of knew how to work with us either. So mm -hmm. for the couple set time, we would say, Hey, can you just make sure that we like split it and we take one half and you take the mm -hmm. other half, which from our point of view it meant that we weren't getting in the photographer's way but from their point of view they were like well now I've only got half the amount of time yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so it was like figuring that out throughout the years and realizing that that really pissed photographers off <laughs> <laughs> but we, we thought we were being nice and kind and sure. yeah. nah so I don't know but you just you, you learn to, to work efficiently and yeah. yeah now we're just like honestly it's like oh I just love working with photographers it's like seeing how they work and I just so I, I really get a buzz on, on that part of the day 
Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. They even so, add like to the creative fuel, I think. Like sometimes yeah. you hit a roadblock and, and you can't think of something. And, and we had a photographer recently. I think it was our first time working with her. And, and we have a lot of great first experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, and she even said like, y'all, y'all keep prompting. Like I, I'm loving like what I'm getting right now. And one thing that we've learned, like if it is, obviously we need motion doing doing video right <laughs> yeah one thing we've learned is like if it's a photographer that just is very like pose 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 we learned this um and this like was a big breakthrough for us like have them describe where they want them posed and then ask say like hey every time we do a new pose can we have them like move into that pose and then move out and, and then don't redirect them let them move out of that pose and so they get that pose that they wanted and we get the motion that we wanted um and so we've That's like cool. really been able to instead of splitting time like you're talking about like just really learning how to work with a particular style some yeah. i think a lot of our photographers are very movement candid uh, mm-hmm. but every now and then we run into that like very posed they don't want them to move when they are taking photos so hey i'm ashley from with Jack. I'm one of the sponsors of the Perspective podcast. With Jack helps to keep photographers in business by supporting them financially and legally if they have problems with a client or they make a mistake in their work. We've all had that fear of our CF card or our hard drive failing and losing important photos. You can find out more at withjack.co.uk. Head over there and find out how we can help you be a confident creative. Yeah, and you're right because I mean we've worked with a couple of photographers, uh, one in particular, um, very much like posey pose, pose, pose. Um, when when we were doing like a, 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 we had set up the scene where they were walking towards each other, and she just got really excited and was just loving it, mm. loving this like degree of motion that she was able to capture, and uh, she came up with some really amazing images. Um, and it was just, it was just really nice to see that excitement. Yeah, yeah. it really was just really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Going back to the relationship you build with your couples is something. I think I found myself talking to you on the way to a wedding recently about how, like as Simon said, we've been doing this for thirteen years, and there's some weddings that, like for a while, we remembered every single couple in detail, whereas now it's like some of them stand out for no particular reason, really. Don't, Whereas don't others, say that we don't know every one of our couples, no, even it's like, though it's not, even though it's true. You can remember them, but it's like I can remember those names and faces, but I don't know much else. Yeah. So, is there any <clears throat> terrible any weddings or couples in particular that have left an impact on you, or they have a story about? Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to say like our elopement and destination couples are the ones that are going to stick with us because, like, uh, we did one. And we literally stayed in the Airbnb with them for three days. And so like we lived together for three days. And so of course, Irene and Elisha are, you know, we have a different relationship with them. Right. And like Elisha's actually, it, it's his birthday. We're going to this weekend, like a previous client's <laughs> birthday with that we're going to. Um, cool. So yeah, there are definitely those couples that we get to connect with like a little bit more, whether that's because we go and like we live together and we're traveling the world together. Um, or like sometimes you just really vibe with a couple. Um, Rebecca and Gabe, they are just mm. so goofy and so weird. She's a business owner. Like we're business owners. Like that's something that we can connect on. And so, yeah, there's those couples that, you know, you're going to you're going to just like vibe with a little bit more than sometimes than we'll like get dinner and realize like we all four get along so well. And, and like it turns into a friendship and it gets overwhelming because then we're like we have too many friends to juggle with <laughs> their clients too and how do we like deal with that um but really it just makes the day even better when you like before the wedding day you realize how much you get along and then you show up on that wedding day and um they feel so comfortable and um it just again like like you said like leaves an impact you're editing their wedding film and you're having so much fun because like that's your friend that you're editing a film for and and you understand them and so you understand like certain moments that play out uh, yeah. and so it, yeah I, I think that there's a lot of couples to that that will like leave an impact and that have left an impact um, but then every now and then sometimes it's 
like we were like oh remember that one couple too so yeah we're also guilty of maybe every now and then yeah. like having a hard time remembering <laughs> someone <so>. yeah <laughs> yeah it's really funny because I'm, I'm like there's a there's a wedding that I'm trying to remember because when you asked the question I was like are there any weddings for me that I can remember and I was like shh I can't remember their name <laughs> remember the but so oh, you're gonna put me on the spot here aren't you <laughs> I'm not we, we, we shot, well, yeah, I wonder if you could remember their names right enough. Uh, we, we shot this amazing wedding one time where the couple had never met. Never met. And they had decided to get married mm-hmm. and they came to Scotland uh, because the groom was from Scotland and they met for the very first time. <coughs> and I just thought, oh, man, this is so special and so unique. Yeah. Like, who doesn't see each other? before they agreed to get married. And I just thought, man, that is fucking cool. So they also had never seen each other? Like, is that part yes. of it? Wow. No, they, well, they, 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 had, they had, like, videos. Oh, yeah, like, okay. long distance. <laughs> the <laughs> whole relationship was long distance online. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, it was the first time they saw each other was at the airport yeah. the day before their wedding. Wow. Crazy. What names? I can't remember Oh, names. you're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you're terrible. That's, this thing like the wedding sticks in my mind and yeah. I'll never forget that but you're right those names are just skipping my head that's terrible <laughs> I mean, I'm looking through and I'm like man that we've shot so many weddings yeah. I was about to say yeah, 13 point. years that's wow. that's a long time so yeah <laughs> yeah that's terrible terrible I'm sorry guys <laughs> how many how many weddings do you tend to aim for a year I think we've when you are shooting a busy summer mm-hmm. yeah I I think we have been like each year trying to do less you know with the prices increasing um i think last year we did 30 which was probably too much i think um especially like for the time and care that we put in post um it it just it takes a while and i think this year it's 25 and i think next year we're hoping for 20 20 or less um and the yeah. goal long term, like if we're really talking like the goal would be like 10 to 15 of these like super unique wedding experiences um, that mm. I feel like would give us the time and care. Like I do want to be able to craft a unique like music bed for each film, like to some degree, yeah. like whether that be just <laughs> yeah. filling space with pads and and like, you know, some soft, gentle keys or whatever. So um, I think doing 10 to 15 would allow us to like put that care into it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Have we, have we spoken about gear actually? Now I'm thinking about it. (laughs) I'm always, I'm always not in in detail. Okay. So guys, what what's in your camera bag for this year, next year? Like, and do you have any thoughts on equipment? Yeah. I might I might actually take this opportunity to grab some more coffee because Aaron She's leaving. <laughs> Bye, this was great. <laughs> I really am gonna grab do you need more tea? You just know that Aaron's gonna geek geek out. Oh now, my gosh, you? y'all. Yeah. I'll just be like brushing my teeth in the morning. He's like, you know what I was thinking? I think that we really need to transition to this for this reason and then then, then this is like what oh. it never stops. So anyway. <laughs> It's part of the YouTube. YouTube is now working out where I'm getting some free gear, so that's been helpful. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but not not. What's the what's the what's the free gear, and how would you get it? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm now on YouTube. I want free gear. <laughs> yeah, I so I I got like you know I'll get like free software licenses a lot now, so I can try it, and cool. then they'll give it to me for free. Um, I'll get free lights every now and then, um, so that's been helpful i'm getting like a mic so not no cameras yet <laughs> maybe someday um yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not you know gerald undone or anything where i do the in-depth <laughs> reviews um but yeah to answer the question with like gear so we have been on fuji film from like the start um the at the time uh the xt3 was like the in my opinion, it was like at the perfect spot where it was like the only, it was the biggest sensor that did 4K60 and 10 bed. And so I, that's why I went with it um, as my like first real good camera outside of like what I had before. Um, and then we've kind of been stuck on Fuji. And I say stuck because 
it's not the perfect camera system at all. Um, but they also offer like some really unique stuff. And so, um, I really love the X-H2S. That's what we're using, um, for our, our two main cameras. And then we have like the X-T4 as, as our third and fourth camera. Um, and then we're using vintage like Zeiss glass. Um, I just think like the combination of the Fuji colors, which is like the main thing that I really love with Fuji film. Um, Mm -hmm. and then like vintage glass that flares in like a really cool, like unique way, I think just really adds this unique touch um to the films and and the images that we get some character some character i think is a good word yeah yeah and so um i'm really trying so i'm still using like on my gimbal like um like a sigma modern sigma lens but i'm really trying to like have every single lens be um a vintage zeiss lens just so we can really lean into the that character um, yeah. but those are like the, yeah, the main things, Fujifilm and, mm-hmm. um, a mix of vintage glass and then like, you know, speed boosted full frame glass. Yeah. And you're okay with, uh, manual focusing throughout a wedding. I know there's a big Absolutely. debate about that. I'm more of an autofocus kind of guy, <laughs> but no hate, no hate. I trust no, no camera more than I trust myself. No, I, no lens more than I trust myself. We So we even have like an R6 and I have tried like, you know, dance floor or whatever. I'll use it as like a mm. camera, especially when I was thinking about switching full Canon till I realized like yep. they're shutting down third party lenses and all that. I was like, okay, never mind. Um, but I, I tried and I don't know. I, I just feel really confident pulling focus. Like I, I it, to me, it, it's second nature. Um, like I, it, I don't yeah. even realize that I'm doing it. And I feel like I even have more control because I'm not like, tapping the screen or whatever like i'm just it's a part it's an extension of me and so i enjoy it i think like mm. andrea it, it was surprising to me but like she picked up on manual focus so quick and she is like on the same lens almost all day long and so especially like commercially like every now and then we have like this real strategic focus pool that we'll have to do um and i'm like andrea it's you like you <laughs> your your camera off in this oh, yes. one she'd be a good like first ac for us but um yeah i don't know we we enjoy it i, I think fuji's autofocus is getting better and there's like some select like this is you know fuji autofocus right now and it's working um yeah. but it's not perfect and i don't trust it on a wedding day so um yeah yeah, yeah it's really interesting it's for me because I like to shoot with a 35 1.4, mm. I feel like the margin of error is just too much for me and I would panic. Mm. So I'm more of a autofocus and then if I decide to lock it, like if I know there's going to be like little movement, I'll lock it. Mm. Um, but it's very much a, like I'll I'll get, I'll feel like I'll use the autofocus 95% and then I'll just that 5%, I'll just, I'll just check every now and then, you know? But yeah. you're right, There there is times where it doesn't, do well like if you're in a forest and there's foliage behind you like rustling leaves it freaks out <laughs> freaks out what are y'all what are y'all on yeah uh so we're on sony okay um that was uh i'm, I'm very much like you aaron i am like um greg there's this new kit can i upgrade uh and for many years greg said no um, even through COVID when, you know, cause we were using, a we were, we've started with EX threes back in the day. Like those were like big camcorders yeah. that we'd have like a, a lettuce 35 millimeter adapter on rails. And then a, a, we had Zeiss, a Zeiss 50 mil. I mean, we're talking about old days <laughs> where like full frame wasn't a thing yet. Yeah. Uh, and then we never had the five D, what did we go no, to we after that? We did. We yeah. went to the 5D Mark II. Mm. And then what did we do? It was, it was just For- all over the place. And we've had different bodies throughout the years. And it was kind of a, it was a bit of a bastardization throughout the years. You know, you'd upgrade one camera and then another one. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I've, I've now bought myself a Panasonic. That's really good. So I'll use that. Yeah. For, and- a, for a long <laughs> time, we were GH5 and 1DX. Oh, yeah. was like the two main cameras. Mm. Um, but then oh. just... Yeah, just in the last two years, we upgraded yeah. to the A7S III and A7 IV. So it's now a full Sony, full Sony lenses as well. Mm. Just keeps it a wee bit easier in post-production. Mm-hmm. It does, yeah, having to colour match all the different glass and 
like sensor types was a nightmare. <laughs> But it was fun. I suppose it was fun. Yeah. Um, so how, so let's talk. How, how many bodies? We won't talk about Kit all the, all this episode. Just very quickly. <laughs> how many bodies? How many lenses? Like focal length? Just like run us through all your kit and then and then sprinkle that on with some audio things. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're, you're making his day, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that smile. Oh, it's wonderful. He's glowing. What a glow. I'm, I've never glow. been able to make him it. smile like that. <laughs> Um, just say yes you can upgrade <laughs> and he'll be like ah! like, I mean I, I like I've been trying to talk her into upgrading Sony for a while just because I, I full frame would be nice autofocus yeah. would be nice as an option um, <clears throat> but also I, I enjoy Fuji it'd be hard to switch and then I agree yeah. like having the same body is so helpful because in post it matches perfectly so all that to say we have like two xh2 s's as our like main cameras um we'll go back and forth on like shooting open gate which is one reason i would have a hard time switching to sony because open gate's amazing once you once you use it um but then we have an xt4 that i've been like flying on the gimbal um and then we have the r6 as like a fourth camera if we need it as a backup you know until it overheats and uh <laughs> and then yeah. uh yeah audio wise we're running tentacle sync like time code has been amazing oh, yeah, okay. um yeah. i i like i couldn't go back to manually syncing everything now um time code is yeah. just so worth it and um Let's see, mix pre. Um, as y'all saw, the interface that was giving me issues earlier. Um, <laughs> we're we're running the mix pre. Thirty two bit float is just uh, on a on a wedding day when you can't monitor everything. Like not having to worry about audio is um, it's worth the the thirty two bit float tax. Like to just do it. So um, we have the six fifty, the TX six fifty. Oh yeah, well, obviously like the little pin mic for oh, you know I slipping in things. pockets or, or slipping it on a mic as a backup for the mix pre. Um, oh, and then lenses. Mm -hmm. She's on like the vintage size for like the really tight shots to like give that crazy character in the background and um, and like the flares that we get with it. And then I'll bounce between. I found um, Tamron matches really well with Zeiss, um, and so right. I've been okay. What was that? Uh, no, I was just saying, oh, okay, I, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so for, for us, at least, like, with that vintage size class, like, the Tamron, like, it leans more green. Sigma, I think, leans very ma magenta. And so it matches really well. It has, like, a little more character than Sigma does. Um, it doesn't feel as sterile, I guess. And so I've been rolling, like, um, a 24 to 70 for handheld with um, a Tamron, and I speed boost that. Um, to kind of get, you know, a full frame field of view. And then, uh, I have my 85. Yeah. So she'll bounce between a 50 and 85, which on super 35, it's like a 85 and a 130. I don't know. Um, yeah. and yeah, that's like kind of, we have the 70 to 200. Yeah. It's ceremony will run 70 to 200. It's just for, um, that's another Tamron that I have. And then she'll use that 85 for the ceremony. So her angle and my angle match pretty closely. Um, cool. and I think that's pretty much it. Oh, the gimbal, I do the 18 to 35 just cause I think that's like the perfect lens for a gimbal. Um, yeah. it, it doesn't like zoom in and out. It zooms internally. So it's like perfectly balanced. It's a good focal length for, um, you know, on super 35, it's a really good focal length for, gimbal work so um, um i always pack my loom cube like that's always in my pocket um because we can do some really fun stuff with that like if a moment pops up we can shape some light really quick and so i can yeah, yeah. i can give aaron some cool lighting and he'll just film that on his own like while i i mm. kind of make that scene or help build that scene um yeah. can, can you can you give a can you give like a wee specific example of using that because I suppose we've talked to quite a lot of filmmakers about how they use these little lights in particular. We haven't really gone into any conversational depth though. So could you? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for all the main reception stuff, we have like our big aperture lights. Um, so that takes care of most, most things, but, um, mm -hmm. for stuff like cake cutting, the, send off. the couple that, yeah. the film she was talking about how like we did that portrait session outside. Well, yeah. obviously the, 
photographer can strobe it and we could run one of those aperture lights, but then we constantly have to move light on a light stand. So she had that loom cube and she would kind of go and, and shape light and, um, we car had, stuff like it send offs. <clears throat> like if they, you know, get those cool vintage cars, like we can light the car really cool, whether that's like, um, in the like back window and you just like, you know, the couple is silhouetted because I'm just like beaming light through the back or we can like light them traditionally. And it's get- really fun too. Cause like if the light is at 30 or 5,600 and you're like at 3,200 because you know, all the tungsten light from the send off, then like it looks yeah. super blue, um, like shining through that window. And it looks really like, I don't know, cinematic, the, the, the catch word, um, <laughs> yeah. but it looks really cool to have like that really blue light shining through silhouetting them like in, in the car's headlights will be like super blue. Um, so, yeah. so there's the main moments like cake cutting and send off like where that's, that's a non-negotiable. And then there's other stuff where like we get creative, even like, um, reception details, florals, that kind of thing in the yes. low, the low light. Like you can get some really yep. cool, unique, like reception details. Sometimes, you know, custom koozies are a cool thing. <laughs> um, you can like get it get those details with the loom lighting and it feels very like flash, like what a photographer would get, but on, on film. And so, yeah, there's fun ways. I love that. Quite often I I send Greg with our little led uh, light and I'll be like, Greg, come here, (laughs) just hold this, point it at that table and just walk around. (laughs) The shadows through the glass. And I'm like, yes, thank you, Greg. Thank you. It's not something, it's not something that you see many other people doing is like, moving the light mm. so yeah. that yeah. it does create those long shadows and you're like oh there's just adding some interest to those detail shots mm-hmm. yeah it's nice. good yeah Espe- yes. especially if you're in a dark room like you guys said mm-hmm. like just adding that little bit of flair it's like a compared it's, to just having a flat shot oh, yeah all the difference yeah. yeah it's like a page out of like yeah. product videography like they'll you know if you see a commercial like they'll have a moving light and it's like why not use that in weddings and use that for details or or whatever. And I know there's like the soup. We don't really do too much like ring shots and stuff like that. Um, We try to look for unique details and, but like people do that for details too. You know, they'll move the light, create like a a Mm -hmm. flash in the diamond or whatever. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know we said, we're not going to talk about gear completely, but I'm going to stay on gear for a second. I'm okay. I'll allow it. You mentioned, (laughs) You mentioned a lot earlier, Andrea, that if there's a bride, you always make them. But someone recently left a comment on one of our videos saying that, oh, with 32-bit float, it's less important now because you can bring up those levels and make the grooms make sound good. So what's your thoughts on that? Because we've not, we've not played about with any 32-bit float recently so do you mind i'm, I'm gonna make a quick point and then i'm gonna pass it to you i'm gonna let you finish um okay, Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> so that point is great for when the bride and groom are together but there are times when the bride is on her own she's with her girl she's with her dad um she's got her own section of the day where she's having her own interactions and enjoying her own relationships and that's when it's like super vital that she has her her own mic and her own moment. Anyway, there, but in the moments where they are together and you can feed off of one another. There is that, but also you have to understand like 32 bit float is super helpful. And, and like you're not, what you're raising is the noise level or the the noise floor level, right? Floor noise. I don't know. Anyway, yep. the just the room tone and all that and whatnot you're still raising that and so proximity to mic is still very important while you're not getting like the preamp noise as much and that's one of the benefits to 32-bit float when you're raising it you're still realizing that she's farther away from the mic and so you're missing um some of that depth and also a, a woman's voice is a little more on the high end and so she's already gonna sound more brittle because she's farther away from the mic and so it's still really important, in my opinion, to get a mic on her. You'll get some of the, you know, nuanced detail of her voice rather than her being so far away from it. And we have had good results with like if the mic is on the groom and they're close, but there's that variable that they're not always going to be close um, and she's not always going to be talking straight into it. So um, it, it's 
proximity is the most important thing with a mic. Like you're, you'll notice like there's going to be a difference in our audio because we had to switch to this mic where she can't be as close to it. And so, um, yeah, proximity is really important mic placement. And so if you can, it's always best. Um, not, not every couple yeah. is going to want to do that and that's fine. We don't make couples do that. Um, we just, we tell them what we know, we educate them on it and then it's their, yeah. it's up to them if they want to do that. Um, mm -hmm. and I think like the last point I'll make is we've been able to get a lot of fun, like audio from portrait sessions that we'll work into, um, like the film and stuff because they're both mic'd and mm -hmm. like, it just, it sounds so clean, um, because yeah. both of them are mic'd. And so, yeah. Well, so, so this is, this is interesting then. So you leave the you leave the mic for the couple session when you are taking videos of them. So I'll say it's. Are you sorry? Go ahead. I was just gonna say, are you hiding the mics? What's your miking technique? Yeah. Um, um, I was gonna just say it depends on the couple because like we can tell when they are okay. gonna be super goofy and weird and like we know that's gonna come out in the portrait session because finally they're together. You know they've been apart all day and all this. Yeah energy is going to come out and they're going to get weird and they're going to get fun. And so we know the couple is like, you need to keep it on and they will even request it. And they're like, I'm, I've been looking forward to this and like, I want to let my weird out. Let's do it. Yes. So first of all, it is, it is couple by couple. So some, um, the one that I'm working on now, like her, um, might got uncomfortable before the ceremony. And so we took it off before the ceremony cause she didn't want it anymore. But we got her vows but, and, and yeah. that's what was, you know, most important. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It, what was the question? Oh, how do we hide it? <laughs> do you want to take over? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm on this Facebook group where it's like called lav hiding techniques or something like that. Um, oh, intro. Hang on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta type this in. I gotta remember this. Right. Okay. If I can't find, uh, let me see if I can find the exact name. Cause that was probably like a paraphrase. Um, <laughs> but I, I can send it to y'all afterwards. However, um, Please do. it's, you just like learn new techniques, obviously, but you really like, um, the groom, you can put it in their suit jacket, um, like right on the outside, kind of almost poking out. And if it's black in a black suit, it blends in. We have white mics. Um, the bride, you have to get pretty savvy. Um, but like we have a lot of, um, Ursa, um, stuff, which like Ursa is this really awesome mic, um, accessories brand. So we have like a, a thigh strap. We have, um, like little foamies is what they're called. Or if we need to get even more discreet, um, like just these little fluffy things that take away the um, like abrasion of rubbing up against their skin. And so what we do is we mic their dress before they even get in it. We leave the pack off. We'll just leave the wire dangling um, and then we'll attach it to them after they get in it. And so you just kind of have to see like, okay, where's A, where can we put this that's not going to be seen? And then B, like, will it be close to her mouth? We had one bride, like her dress was like, so plunging um that it was like almost it was really low um but it still worked and it sounded better than not having a mic and using on camera yeah. audio and the brides have been yeah. really cute they'll like you know we'll we'll meet beforehand and that's something we mentioned like hey if you want to be mic'd like we would love to do that here's what the process looks like and they'll start sending me pictures of their dress and they're like i think this would be a really great place <laughs> and like i think and if you run it this way and like they get really into it like it's been oh, it's I been do. fun and so you also know like beforehand like who's into it who's excited about it and like who might be like more timid and you just know not to like yeah. push push certain things and to check in more frequently on the ones who like you know might have been a little nervous about it so you get a good feel beforehand like who's bought in who's super excited and like who's who's like a maybe well and it even goes into yeah. the like showing what you want to grow like that's a big thing that people always say and so if couples see that there was so like funny moments and they could tell that they were mic'd like we had a couple a few couples upon our consultation call they're like Will I be mic'd? And, and usually we're like, well, if you want to, they're like, no, I like, I want to be mic'd. Like, will I be mic'd? And so, um, yeah, if, if couples see that in your work, then they're not going to be hesitant when they're, um, booking you and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if there's like many people listening that are thinking that they're, they're not thinking, but like the assumption would be that people won't like to get mic'd. And that's at the forefront, whereas it's quite refreshing to hear that couples want to, and that's nice. 
I like that. Yeah. As you say, if a couple hears a cute moment in one of your films, they're going to say to you, how, how did you manage to get that? And once they hear that they have to be mic'd up, they're on board, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We, ever since we started sharing that with them, like uh, upon our consultation call, there hasn't been any hesitancy. Like we haven't had a couple that has said no to it. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't think so. At least it's, yeah. I, I was the same way initially. I was like, uh, that seems, why are people making the bright? That seems like so hard. And the audio sounds fine when I raise the levels. But then once I did it, it's one of those things like your ears are open to like, oh, it sounds so much better. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's a difference maker. And I, I think it if your style like lends itself towards canon moments and heavy audio, then it's it's worth going the extra mile. Yeah, yeah. that's so cool. Let, let's talk about post-production for a bit. What's, give us like your broad strokes uh, post-production workflow like how does it sort of look for you guys we're very different yeah our approaches um so basically we have a big whiteboard with all of our projects and we'll just kind of divvy up which ones uh i get and which one he gets um typically aaron gets the more non-traditional ones like the thing the weddings that are like really out of the box um because his mind can just handle it and like match <laughs> that non-traditional vibe and like enhance it. He, he can hang with it. Um, and so I get maybe like our more traditional, um, wedding films. And so my style is I love to get everything organized, everything in its own bin, all my multicams built. And then, um, I mentioned this earlier. I just want to sit back and rewatch every clip. I want to hear the audio that was in there. Um, I want to see like where sometimes like certain part of the day, like was heavier than another, like heavier in like the amount of footage that we got. Um, mm -hmm. uh, a film I recently like went through they just happened to be like, okay, well now let's go to the first look. Now let's go say our vows. Now let's do the ceremony. And because I like heard that happen in every part of the day, I'm like, there's my transitions. Like I'm going to lean into this and like let that happen. Um, you have told so, him about that. <laughs> I haven't told him about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> um, Surprise. Yeah. So I love just watching everything back. Um, and then I choose my selects. I take the good stuff put it on a timeline roughly. And then I love to grab all of my audio or all of my um, music, um, every single song that I'm going to use and put my selects down in the song. And then I have a roadmap. And typically at that point he comes in and he's like, I love these transitions. I love this flow, maybe tweak this. And he gives me some guidance. Um, and we get like that roadmap really solidified. And then I go back over and I add, um, b-roll and so like that's my approach i'm pretty consistent every single time in my approach not so much you i do it differently literally every single time um oh, yeah. interesting all right and i don't know if it's part of like <clears throat> i don't know whatever creatively like motive i think I, I don't know i don't know how much of a tangent i want to go off on this but like doing work full time as like a creative is really hard because sometimes you are creative and creatively motivated. And then sometimes you're like, I don't have it in me. And so sometimes I have to like take a very surgical approach where it's like, okay, I'm going to lay this down. Here's my roadmap. But then sometimes it's like, I have this like, like over this insane amount of like creative energy to where like, I'm going to build out three minutes of this film entirely. Like I'm not going to lay out a roadmap. Like I'm just, I'm throwing all my B roll in. I'm doing like crazy, um, you know, effects. Like I had this idea once to like add text on the screen and have like when the groom walked away, it like wiped the text. Like it just added to the story. And so I like worked for three oh. hours on like that when I only had 30 <laughs> seconds of the film done, you know, when, when I think, yeah. A very organized person. They're like, I know what I want to do there and I'm going to do that later. Um, but for me, it was like, no effects are coming right now. Like audio, like sometimes I need to color grade it because I'm, I'm like, I, I, I want to see how this looks color graded. And so I'm disorganized, like disorganized. Is that a word? Yeah. yeah unorganized. Um, and, and it's sometimes a mess, but, uh, that's my mind in a nutshell anyway. So yeah. He'll invite yeah. me and he's like, do you want to see what I've got so far? And it's like <laughs> 30 seconds here. And then, you know, blank space. And he's like, and this is what I'm going to do here. And then 30 more seconds. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> 
Oh man, I had a very similar thing happen to me. Gre- Greg always like winds me up about this, but there was one time I had this idea of like starting the film and making an intro and I put the names and, and stuff and I was like, I need something underneath. So I found this reading in it and I put it in and then I was like, it just, just feels boring. So I chucked in all this delay and it sounded absolute. It just sounded wild, <laughs> like 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 not part of a wedding film at all. Like some artistic, weird, experimental film. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna leave that." And it kind of became a thing. I th- I think I might even still do it from time to time. I, mean, I still might do no it. No, as much as you used to. <laughs> it was just I just kept on adding like crazy reverb and delays and EQing things wildly. I was like, this does not. This is not a wedding film right here. This is something a bit out there. But I loved it. Yeah, I yeah. loved it. But are there any cool. specific sort of editing techniques that you? find yourself going back to that just work for wedding storytelling? I mean, there's your, your classic, like, you know, you have an intro that gives like, that's really fun and high energy and gives like a recap of the day. You get like some of your most like fun stuff in there and then you slow it down for your vows and, um, kind of land on that for a little bit. And then you bring it back up for the reception and some funny toasts and, um, you know, just all the, the more exciting, like reception moments. And so there are some, some, films that or like wedding days that fit that mold really well and um you can still get really creative in in the audio that you select there to like match the high low high kind of like flow um so i mean that's that's a classic i think it's always a challenge to to break that um there's some films like that's just the fit that's just what you need to do and then there's some films where you get to break that and it's really fun yeah i think like touching on techniques, something that I've like been trying to do is create like more space in between like transitions, not feel like it, everything needs to be like pushed from moment to moment to moment. And so like, um, yeah, like let it, letting something play out or <clears throat> like letting it fade to black and then like let tension build. And it's like, where are we going? You know? And so that's, I think that's been fun. Like kind of using techniques like that. Um, like one technique to the intros, like it, sometimes we, or a lot of times we use those intros to tell people who this couple is immediately. And so we'll use like a really good audio bit that just describes the couple really well. And so I think like, that is like a really good edit. I guess this falls into the camp of an editing technique because we're telling the viewer, whoever it is, like who this couple is like right away, like giving this one key characteristic um, about them, about the relationship. Um, And so that's like something that we lean on a lot is like setting the stage for the viewer to know who this couple is and to fall in love with this couple. So, um, yeah. Yeah. How would you guys know, which impactful moments you're going to use as like that that base layer? I think. Like, say you've got say you've got like nine speakers. How on earth do you essentially call every other moment into like the bits that you're going to use? I find it extremely hard. <laughs> yeah, it's stressful. Um, sometimes the speakers rule themselves out because they don't. They're not very eloquent. They can't tell that like get their point across in like that thirty seconds. You know that you that you can put into to the film. So sometimes they rule themselves out. Or they roast yeah. the groom the entire yeah. toast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes you do get like everybody gets up there and just kills it. Um, and so then what we what I rely on. Um, is, you know, we like send a questionnaire to the bride and groom and they kind of like state their priorities. They kind of let us know the people in their lives that are most important, um, aspects of the relationship that they really love. And so that helps us weed through, um, like, okay, this is all so good. Um, how do I choose what's right? And it's like, okay, this bride and her dad are super close. And so, you know what? the dad's toast is going to make it in over, you know, her college roommate or something like that. And so um, just leaning on things that we know about the bride and groom and their priorities Mm -hmm. to help like make those decisions. Yeah. I would even say like, it doesn't always work this way, but something that I've 
try to do if it works this way is use different bits of people's stories to finish one story about the couple. And so oh, okay. uh, a lot of the times if, if people are sharing qualities about the groom and the bride, they're similar qualities. And so you can use 10 seconds of one person, you know, 20 seconds of another person and use them to compliment and finish that story. That's like, <clears throat> that, again, it doesn't always work, but when it does, it's like, oh, perfect. Like you can tell they're telling the same story and, and it really is even more impactful because like it just like solidifies whatever they're trying to say about that quality of that person. You're like, Oh, that, that must be like very loud that like they are this kind and loving. Um, yeah. and so, yeah, that's, that's like a one way to, to work that in and, and, and yeah. have everyone share, um, in the wedding film. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that because you're also giving another person some screen time, mm -hmm. yeah. which is something I, 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 think i feel guilt about it like say you've got nine speakers and you know that this person in particular over here you ain't you ain't making it into the film <laughs> i'm really sorry pal i'm um, just and you do feel bad and yeah. you do wonder like are the couple gonna be like eh, uncle joe here he wasn't in the film at all can you put him in and you're like ah but yeah have you ever had that like have you ever had someone say like i really want so-and-so's toast and it's not in there yeah, yeah, there was. Lovely. Yeah, um, I can't remember the couple, but there was. It was like, um, was it like a parent? A mum made a speech, or there was a reading, or something like that. And they and they asked me to to put something in, and I. So we tend to give quite long films, especially when I'm so undecisive about what to call because I'm a I'm I'm too guilt ridden. I just want to show everything. <laughs> everything goes in the film but like when that didn't like obviously that it was i'd obviously not realize the importance of this person or whether it was like maybe maybe the mom after watching it with them was like oh i wasn't in the film <laughs> so it's uh yeah i remember having to put it in but there was like the film was already like 20 minutes long mm. which is a long time uh, and I was just like, I can't, I can't. It was a huge, it was a big reading. And I'm like, I don't know how to put this in except for going, <coughs> just chopping the film at a certain point, <laughs> moving the ending and just forcing it right in there as like a break, like a dynamic break to like just lull the party a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you've had, so like you said, like you want to bring people up, you want to bring people down like the energy of a film. And th that was the only way I could kind of do it was just like find two bits of like high energy where I could kind of cut and force a break in there. And the couple did like it, but it felt weird to me. Yeah. Do you yeah. try and explain that, right? that to them? That's what is, if we ever get that kind of feedback, it's like, it's hard to, mm. for them to understand like the flow of the film and like explain to them, like yeah. if I do this, it breaks this. Like, do you try and have those conversations? Usually. Cause well, Greg manages the emails, so <laughs> precisely what Greg writes to the couple, I'm not sure. Yeah, Simon usually goes to me, oh, that just won't work. It won't, it won't work. work. Ah. And then I need to try and politely word it as like, <laughs> oh, you know, to make it work in the edit, we need to do this or that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't know about how you guys feel about when a client comes back to you and asks for changes, but I used to feel very protective mm. about the films that I would make, which sounds when I say that absolutely absurd because it's their couple's wedding. And if they don't like a bit, you know, you change it and you don't get proud or, or whatever it was. But I used to do that. Uh, now, not so much. I, I'm just like, I understand this is their film. I'm just a person. I will do the changes that they asked me to because that's my job. And, um, in fact, yeah, sometimes it works out for the better as we have discussed in past episodes of the podcast. Yeah. Do um, your, do your couples have any collaborative input at the edit stage or are you just trying to get their vision in pre-production from getting to know them? We, um, <clears throat> from the beginning, we have always, when we send them their film, we don't send them a download link yet. Um, this is kind of a hack that I learned from my mentor because 
at least me, like I'm too insecure in that like if I send it to them and I don't hear anything, they hated it. And like I, I will never move on from that. <laughs> um, and so we send them what we call a review link. And we want their feedback. And and ultimately, okay. I would say over half the time, it's like, it's perfect. Um, probably even like 75% of the time. It's perfect. Send me, you know, all the links. This also buys us some time on the back end to like finish doc edits um, after we send them that. <laughs> um, and so it, it helps there. But um, we do that and we, and we tell them in there like, Please let us know if there's a moment you can't hear yourself speak or if like we understand that like there might be a shot that they just don't find flattering. And I would hate for them to have one shot that ruins the film for them. Like it really shouldn't ruin the film for them, but maybe like there's just this one shot that they cringe at every time. And so yeah. we invite them to um, share feedback and mm-hmm. we have guided. I can only think of one couple, but one couple they gave us so much feedback and a lot of it, I was just like, this doesn't make sense. Or this, like you're being, I didn't say this, but like they were being too self-conscious about like certain moments that during their first look, like there was the cutest little, like she ran up and hugged him from behind and she thought it was too cringy. And I was like, no, that like, that made your film so much better. Cause that was such a unique, like, not posed like moment like that was really yeah. sweet um and yeah. so we like as gentle and loving as possible like shared our reasoning for like why we don't why they should reconsider a few requests um and it worked out but yeah i, I think that like like you s- said simon like i think it's important to like make a film that they love like is yeah. attached to our art as we might feel it ultimately it's their wedding day and their heirloom that like they're going to share with their kids and their kids kids and so um i think it's important that they also love it <laughs> yeah no, exactly yeah I, that's interesting because like with photographers when they share the gallery like people can go into their pick time gallery or whatever other platform and they can hide certain images so if mm. they think, oh, my nose looks funny in that image, mm. they can just hide it. And then they share that link with their friends and they just don't see that image. Yeah. Whereas with a film, it's the only way to do that is to get the filmmaker to re-edit. Yeah. So that's interesting. Mm. Oh my goodness. I've just thought of a futuristic idea for editing. <laughs> Where you just, it's just a gallery of images or a gallery of Every frame. Movie, uh, movie clips and the music's underneath and and the 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 bass layers are there but you can just be like no nope, don't like that one don't like that one change it and it'll just automatically ai create for you that little section of the film i don't know why i've just brain farted that was so random Ro- robots are gonna take our jobs so i yeah. I, I can't i can't wait until robots just are introduced to the to the filmmaker's workflow i mean oh just hurry up already <laughs> Hurry up, be smart, robots. Come on. Do you, I, I, so when you were talking about um, sending a link to review for your couples, the automatic kind of thought I would be worrying about would be like, do you do you worry that you're you're welcoming in critiques that don't need to be critiqued? Yeah. Like you said that 50% of your couples asked you to make changes. That's, I, I don't want to say it's quite high, but like that's extra work sure. for you on the back end for you to like, you know, make the changes, export again, re upload, send them another link. Does that ever cross your mind or has that never really bothered you in that you just want the couple to have the best relationship with their film on the other end? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times the, of course it, it does make us nervous, right? We would love to just like send it and, you know, then be happy with it. We opening that door is very nerve wracking. Um, but I do think having that door open gives them a lot of peace in the booking portion. Like that's a a question that we get pretty often up front of like, do you know, like, is there an editing process? And we're like, yeah, we, you know, we'll send you your review film. You can give us some feedback. Um, 
So that is a concern people have up front and that gives them some peace about it. Um, and then I would say the edits tend to be pretty small. Like sometimes it's their title slide, right? Like her name is Allie and she wants it to be Allison. Um, little things like that. Um, yeah. Or like one frame that they're like, I, I just, well, I say one frame, like one shot that they just didn't love. And so, um, yeah, contractually, we, we say one hour of editing. And so it's, oh, okay. cool. it's, and that's usually what it is. I will say there's been a time where it was like one full day and I didn't bill them just because I didn't want to do that. But um, yeah. generally, like you were saying, it's super easy, straightforward stuff. Yeah. Were you were you worried about like negative review on the on the other end or cuz I noticed that there's like there's always a discussion when mm. people get, particularly if people if couples cancel for any reason. There's always that debate whether or not they should give certain money back or and then there's like well my contract says this but I am worried that that will lead to bad reviews yeah and i'm and i wonder is that mindset always in the back of our minds as creative people that at any point that could be a worry absolutely yeah always there's always like our our business is our baby and so we always want to protect it and we always want what's best for it um i think what's helped us like at this stage is that we can kind of tell when um, clients might be problematic. Like we can kind of see some red flags. Um, I think something that we really value is couples that trust us and they will use certain language. Like you hear it in their language in your conversations with them before booking, like when they trust you and like when that trust is there, I think it takes down a lot of that fear. Um, yeah. That they might like retaliate or be unhappy or leave a negative review. And so I think at this point, we've, we know what to look for. We know what might be concerning and what like couples might not, you know, be the best fit. Um, and so I yeah. think that helps us like protect ourselves really well and, and put our guards down a little bit because the couples that we're choosing to work with, we know that they trust us. We know that we're a good fit. Um, and so it, yeah, just makes us feel a little bit safer, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I and I'm just a people pleaser, and so I ultimately like I that's I have kind of back to what you were saying earlier. Like I and I open up the opportunity for edits because I just I don't want them to sit there and think like, "Ooh, I want this edit, but I'm too afraid to ask." Um, at the end of the day, like we have the contract to help us if it is an absolute pain. We haven't felt the need to enforce or, or like use language there. Um, but being like a people pleaser is hard in this situation because, um, we do add that extra step on our job and we have to always consider like we can't move on yet because, you know, we have this edit that we're going to open up to. Um, but I don't know. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. I've thought so many times of just delivering, not opening that up. But I don't know. It just, it's worked. It hasn't really bit us in the butt yet. I'm sure it could. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was okay. that one instance where it almost did, I guess. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. It, it, and like my mentor who has done this forever, like I just, I really trust like his guidance. And that's the only reason I started doing it. And it's worked yeah. out. I know there's so many, like y'all said, there's so many people that are like, I don't even do at it. It's like, forget it. And I see that conversation <laughs> often um and uh, i don't know that just makes me feel a little like put off at like not even considering certain things if like like you said like in photo gallery if they don't like their nose in one shot they can hide that but yeah, that's gonna live yeah. forever in their 10 minute film or whatever so mm, yeah. um yeah there's this tension say, of people pleasing and doing what's best for us in our business um yeah so yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Greg, I'm just going to interrupt you. I just want to say, guys, that you are both masters at listening to my bloody rambles and picking out the question <laughs> between a thousand words and thoughts and brain farts. And so thank you. Well done. It was, yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Oh, I thought I, you were I was very just well. Say, though, you, you communicate very well. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was one moment where I didn't even finish my thought with a question, and you were like, "Yes." So that, <laughs> <laughs> I 
is great. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I see a lot of say, Aaron in you. What you said. Sorry. No, like, well, <laughs> yes, quite possibly. Yeah. Uh, yes, because I, I too am very similar with the kit and the creative flow of how I approach things. I'm seeing a lot of similarities. So yeah, between all all yeah. of us, and yeah, then, and then you and Greg are obviously very similar. Yes, I think <laughs> I think that helps this chemistry a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah what you said about it being comforting for the client at the booking stage to know that there's a review link is totally true because in the consultation call I quite often get the question of oh like is that final when we get the film or can we can we make changes and they usually give like this non-answer where I'm like it's pretty much final like we've we've made what we think's the best film for you but you know if there's something you really don't like you can let us know it's like just a non-answer pretty much <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, Damn. they must. They will find that comforting that when you tell them, "Look, you can make any changes you want." Mm-hmm. That'll be pretty good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although Which, being big babies, if they were to push us on re-edits, I'd hap- I'd, I'd do it. I was going to say happily do it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm a terrible person. So, we do usually yeah. push them against like certain. Like we tell them if they ask, they're like, "What if we don't love the music?" And we're like, "You probably will." Like we we <laughs> really. You sometimes confidence goes a long way, right? And yeah, so, I, I think so. And so we, we tell them like we're very in, like obviously we're very versed in music. Like we love all kinds of different music, and I try to s- stay away from corny music or, or whatever. Um, and I use I use your wedding day to like direct myself on what style you like. Um, and so I think we've only had like one music request change, and it was like an intro, so that was super easy to like switch real quick. Um, and so. There are things that we will kind of like say, usually we want to work on like audio bits. Like if there's something that you can't hear very well, um, this is what we, in our review page, we direct them on like saying what to point out. We don't say like, tell us if you don't like the music. Um, we try to steer clear of certain things like that that will add yeah. um, extra work. So, yeah. Like complete rework of the, the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Andre, you mentioned uh, earlier that you'd show up to a wedding venue and Aaron would be away setting up the lights. Uh, You did mention the lights, but I think as filmmakers, lighting is such a... It's such a thing to do at a wedding, right? Right is to, like, the couple have come in, they've decorated, they've they've done these things, they might have lights, but we as creative people have come in and we've been like, we need this, boom, boom, light, light. And it is, it's quite as, um, I don't want to say it's quite a statement, but people know that there's lights and they're for a video. What, what is your setup? How do you set up and when do you use lights? Yeah, go for it. Me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, every reception, like there's, there will be sometimes we don't need to use them because there's like mm. amazing, beautiful, natural light spilling in. Um, but I would say most of the time we have to use it at least to like our win- so our windows are blown out so we can add some yeah. fill light in. Um, uh, but unique situations, there might be a bridal suite that has zero flattering windows. And I'll bring a Fresnel in and bounce it off of a wall or bounce it off of a ceiling. And then it just creates this beautiful soft light pretty effortlessly too. Um, I think there's a lot of situations where you can just crank your ISO and hope it looks decent. But I think like contrast through lighting is so important for a good image. And so just running and grabbing a light stand is it helps a lot and it's not mm. that hard and it might seem intimidating cause you're adding more to the room, but this goes back to like the couple trusting you. And mm. honestly, like they're going to see that and be like, Oh, they, you know, they know what they're doing cause they're bringing a light in. Um, yeah. and you know, try not to like throw a Fresnel straight onto them, find like something to bounce it off of. <laughs> Um, I think we've even been as extra as like I've had Andrea 
like hold a white like bounce board because there was zero yeah, white yeah. walls, you know, and so nothing to bounce it off of. Um, mm-hmm. But that's like part of it is using that. I think we've even when the photographer took them out for um, portraits, like she wanted, she was shooting on like an 85. So we couldn't get in with the loom cube. So we brought, you know, Fresnel out and had some like fun, harsh light for that. Um, um, there's probably two or three it. ceremonies that we've lit. Um, okay. like one I can think about was a super rainy day. And so it was just dark. It was just really dark. And like, we were even strategizing with the photographer beforehand and they were like, we rather not shoot the ceremony with flash. Like, can we set up these lights? So we've done that or like, you know, there's some venues where the light comes in and it's so bright behind them. And then the couples tend to be like in this little cove. And so they're like casted with shadows, but you have this huge bright backlight. And so sometimes it's nice to add a little bit of light on, on the couple themselves. That way we can get a little bit better exposure. So we've probably only done that like two or three times. And we always strategize with the photographer to be like does this help you too does this hinder you the photographers love the lights we've learned like i've had multiple times where they're like please send me the links to those lights (laughs) and they're like whoa that's more expensive than a flash Um, (laughs) Uh, but uh, i think like really a part of it is just what will be the best for the image because that's what the couple's gonna want they're not gonna want like it to look bad and so um it might be intimidating it might be like this really like production-y looking thing but that goes in like we use the small little like ls60x that everyone uses um it's not like huge so it helps like being as discreet as possible but there is a part of an element of it that feels production-y you just got to do your best Mm -hmm. to to make it feel comfortable yeah totally is there so you're only using one of those lights for say speeches we use two you use two one on the couple one on the speaker yeah we kind of flood the whole space and then I'll try to backlight just to kind of add like a little pop to yeah. the back of their head is, is how I prefer to do it. But that doesn't always work that way. We try to yeah. Yeah, really directing them before they start doing the speeches helps. It's like, hey, like stand pretty close to each other. So like you're having a conversation and then we're able to yeah. flood that whole space with that one light. Yeah. OK, cool. Interesting. Did we only have the one the one very powerful light um i tend to l- like lean towards back lighting mm. uh except for like speeches where it's just complete darkness right in a room um we have pretty dark scottish castles over here so uh, awesome. yeah, that, <laughs> that has to be a thing um but yeah that's cool um obviously we're running to two hours almost. Really? Or past wow. two hours. So it's flying by. We're gonna wrap up with a couple of very quick questions. Uh what are your future inspirations or you know, aspirations and goals as as, as fil- filmmakers for like next year, a couple of years down the line? Yeah. Um so Aaron kind of mentioned we're we're going through a rebrand and like we're we're very intentional with the direction we want to go. So again, like our goal would be ten to fifteen weddings a year and we we wanna be very like experience based. We want to do multiple days of coverage. We want it to be like this bigger, longer drawn out story, um, for their wedding film. You know, the wedding day is just going to be one aspect of it. And we want there to be other days of coverage to like really build that out and like get more, um, custom and like holistic with, um, the films that we're going to put out there. But I think we have to get into some pretty serious like rebranding to communicate that to the right couples to like attract the right couples, find the people who really want that. Um, I think we would love like anybody, we want to do a little bit more like destination elopement, um, work. Of course, like we love our local Texas, like market. We love it here too, but we would love to just like go and experience new things and find ways like to use that to elevate the films. Um, so on the wedding side, I think that's definitely the direction we want to go. Um, do you want to pick up from there? Sure. Um, yeah, I think like Andrea said, like we still want to do Dallas weddings because it's nice to not always have to travel, but also yeah. be inspired, like having something to look for. So we're doing a wedding in Italy in the fall and having that to look forward to is like really exciting. It's inspiring and encouraging. So like if we could have those sprinkled in, 
but not have like us flying every month. That would be nice. Um, and <laughs> like good. just fitting that cup, finding that couple that like wants experiences rather than like film our wedding, you know? And I think the trend for a while has been like, let's make a perfect five minute film, but I really want to make like something that feels like a feature film and do it justice um, and make it longer. Um, and so yeah. it, it sounds like y'all kind of lean that way too. Um, and yeah. so, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's on the wedding side. And then commercially, and I know this isn't a podcast about commercial videography, um, so I'll be brief on this, but like we really business want... Business is business. Business like, is business. Business is business, yeah. that's fair. Uh, we really want to like just have that grow. Uh, you know, we, we it was my name was like what I did stuff under commercially. And we've kind of changed that to like being a more of a studio name. And we'd love to like be able to grow that and, and, um, be something that like we can have employees and, and have associates work with us and maybe even a physical space. Eventually it's like, I'm very inspired by like shaping light and, and that's hard to do on a wedding day. And so, um, getting to like <clears throat> creatively do that, um, commercially is just, yeah, it's, yeah. it's exciting. And I think to build on, <coughs> sorry, to build on, <laughs> <Fighting> this, <laughs> <laughs> To build on that, I think something that we really bene benefited from is mentors and relationships and people who have been willing to teach us and bring us along and like care for us. And so I think we would love to do that as well. I think we see ourselves doing that more in the commercial space probably um, by, you know, building a team and caring for them well. And um, this lifestyle that we have, like we know that it's unique, that we get to work together and build our own schedule and um, have a lot of freedom. And I I think we would love to like invite more people into that. So I think we have a really big heart um, to nurture growth in other creatives. Um, I think Aaron, it was hard for him to like give up his job and pursue this full time because, you know, he didn't really see a whole lot of people doing that and it didn't feel like an accepted thing to do to like lean into your creativity and make that your full-time job. And the, the way he was able to do that and the resources he had to like do that, like we want to be that for other people. So I think that's another yeah. really exciting thing. I don't know what that looks like yet, <laughs> but I think that's, <laughs> that's, exciting. that's something that like would bring us a lot of joy. And I think like fulfillment in that, you know, we're not, we're not keeping it for ourselves, but we want to like help other people too. Yeah. That's cool. cool. A lot Very of cool. exciting plans on the cards then. Yeah. So yeah. there's been a lot of knowledge and advice throughout this whole episode, but if you were to be starting next week in wedding films, what would one piece of advice you'd want to know be? Like what, what can you leave our listeners with? I don't, I don't know how like, I feel like a lot of people would, would share this knowledge and no one will actually listen to it because this was also advice given to me. But like, <clears throat> just go out and create. Don't sit around and try to figure out like your next upgrade plan. Like the more you create, the better you're going to be. Um, and so I think like that's something that I have tried to lean into um, more so is like, less geeking out about the gear. I still love it. It's a part of it. That's fine. But, um, if you're new, like just work with what you have, um, and create, like, that's the biggest thing. Um, I think I sat around so much watching YouTube videos, trying to figure out my next upgrade plan and not creating when I could have spent that time creating and using what I had. Cause if you can make a good image with a really bad camera, then you can make a really good image with a good camera. So yeah. And I, I think, yeah, my advice would be like find community and like stay humble. I think there's a lot of mm. egos. There's a lot of comparison. And I think that you can kind of get stuck in that cycle of comparing and being like, I know more than them. I create better work than them. Like, why am I not successful? Like just getting bogged down by that. Like I know that's happened to me. Like that's, those are conversations we've had and we're like, wait, like, we need to humble ourselves here. We need to like focus on what we know we're good at. We need to like stay in community, like surround ourselves with other creatives that are uplifting and that like motivate us and inspire us. Um, I think if you find that community that loves you well, you can stay out of that cycle of comparison and like getting your ego bruised. And um, 
Yeah, I think I think the friends that we've had in the industry, even outside of videographers, like we mentioned, we love our photographers, planners, venues. Yeah. Like we just have a solid group of community around us that I think keeps us grounded and motivated. And so I, I would say find that, find your community and, and stay humble. Awesome. Hell yes. Yeah. Bonus, two, two pieces of knowledge for the listeners. Two Brilliant. Bonus <laughs> tips, you lucky bastards. You so <laughs> final, final question that we always like to ask is, do you have any book recommendations for listeners, whether it's business book or creative sort of influence book? We'll give two answers again. Yes. We are very different when it comes to reading. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't okay. read, but, um, <laughs> but I actually picked up, um, a book recently, um, which is called the 30 second storyteller. Um, and you know, back to that, like really wanting to create ads and, and, um, like go down that path with one part of our business. Um, it's been super helpful in like getting a director's perspective on how to approach that. Cause there's just, there's a lack of knowledge that like we talked about. Like YouTube is just gear, 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 gear. And it's not yeah. as good, you know, of ed- educating you on the actual process. So mm. that's been my book that I've been reading. Um, I don't usually like, I don't like fiction very much when it comes to reading. And so, um, She's going to completely flip the script there because that's all she does. <laughs> yes. yes, I love sci-fi, fantasy. Like, that is my genre. I will stick to that. Like, that's all I read. Um, and so I've been reading one book for a while now. It's called The Name of the Wind. Um, and it's really great. I was reading it on our vacation last week. And, like, multiple people stopped by and they were like, that book's awesome. <laughs> um, and our friends are like, that's how you know the nerds that are here. Um, but also, I love the Red Rising, like, series. And their sixth book just came out. Lightbringer, and so I have already purchased that. It is on its way. Um, I just find like sci fi fantasy is just so much fun, and like it's a great escape. Like, we can't even watch TV anymore without being like, oh, consistency error, that lighting <laughs> sucks, you know, <laughs> like it can't, it's not a safe es- escape anymore. And so, um, yeah. reading a good space war book is great. Are you are you on uh, TikTok? Do you follow all the kind of like book reader recommendations and all that kind of stuff? Because my wife is an avid reader of sci-fi and fantasy stuff also. And she has found a wealth of TikTok readers who are on there and they're constantly showing their libraries of their books. And <laughs> my wife's in the middle of doing her little library section in the house. Cool. It's very intense. I want one. Oh, no. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get one of those. <laughs> Her, uh, I haven't, though. She, uh, she, she got me to read uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of that by no. Sarah J. Mass, I believe her name is. You might like it if you are fantasy. Although, um, Little Rompy. A little <laughs> Rompy, which I wasn't okay. expecting. <laughs> so uh, that might be <laughs> that might be something that puts you off, or something that you appreciate. I don't know. I'll let you be, I'll let you be the judge. We don't judge people's uh, book taste, you know. Yeah, <laughs> no judgment. But um, yeah, it was it's it's quite a good book series. Um, but yes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this over two hour long episode of Perspective. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course, we're, we're, a blast. Where can people find you and your work online? Yeah, um, our website, bythemillers.co, so just C-O. Um, we will be having a revamp pretty soon, so we're excited for that. Um, Instagram, at bythemillers, um, and then TikTok, at bythemillers as well. I think we have decided we want to put a lot more like personal content there, some travels, oh. some uh, poking fun at being a husband and wife team, a little bit of comedy <laughs> for you. We have yes. been saying that though, and we just haven't done it. I think we, we're fine creating content for other people, but for ourselves, we're a little bit more hesitant, but that's the plan and I've spoken <laughs> it. And so now Take I have to knife. live up to it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's Yeah, it's hard because like being a personal brand, we feel like we need to put more of ourselves out there. We're just bad at it. Mm. Yeah. So, um, um, and yeah. then do you want to do a plug for your YouTube? Sure. Um, well, buy the Millers for everything that's by the Millers. <laughs> um, and then my YouTube, I just do it under Aaron Miller and you could 
pro- like you could probably find it on YouTube if you just type in Aaron Miller, especially if you typed in Aaron Miller and then Fuji, you'll find me. Um, <laughs> and so okay. feel free to subscribe. That'd be cool. But also, if you don't like my stuff, that's fine if you don't subscribe. A um, watch is a watch. <laughs> yeah. A comment is a comment. <laughs> so, it's, hard, it's hard doing YouTube. It's hard, mm-hmm. especially at the beginning when you're like, oh, I've got 10 followers. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. I'll, subs- and, I'll subscribe. I'll, I'll oh. do it after this uh, after this recording if I've not wow. already maybe I have already I'm not sure <laughs> um, but yeah keep going and uh, yeah people can find us at perspectivebycinemate.com um, our Instagram it's very hard having a podcast for three years and then now just deciding yeah. to have an Instagram <laughs> and going all the way back to zero followers so please I will beg I am it's not below me <laughs> <laughs> Hit the follow button on our Instagram, please, and do so on YouTube, because I love you, and you're the best. Uh, And thank you for With Jack for sponsoring this episode. We hope you have loved this conversation as much as we have loved recording it. And if you have, you can join us at our YouTube, which is at Perspective by Cinemate, and get this on podcast wherever you get your podcast however in the meantime enjoy your life <laughs>